And then we post in the Discord. The publisher's actually working. Let's go. Oh, no, it's not. Scratch that. Then I post in general. Be live. Then I post on Twitter. Nice. <laughs> At least people can see what I'm doing this time. Normally I do this all like off screen, so it just looks like I'm not paying attention to the stream, but now you can see me friggin' retweet and all this stuff. Hammer. There we go. Now I've posted to all of our places we post. And I'll shut Twitter. <laughs> have you been doing Realm? Uh, yeah, I have. I had to re get my Realm up, actually. I'm losing my rank. And I'm, like, doing the pay-to-win stuff. I'm just like, who the fuck? Like, everybody's going so hard. Yeah, dude. I'm still in, like, the 500s right now. My tech tree is badass, too. Like, I got a bunch of the ones where you pay Realm. Like, a bunch of this shit is way maxed out. I did just unlock South America. I'm a little hesitant to open it, though, just because it costs 1,500 Realm. I guess I don't even... I have 1,700, so I could open it now. Those definitely give you an advantage, like, uh, during those events, like that one event where it's, like, red versus green versus yellow or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Because, like, the people that had those later continents, like, we couldn't even support because we were not high enough level. So, like, it definitely is a whales game out there, but you have less competition when you're, like... You unlock those later continents for the events. Yeah. That's how my team like came in second was uh like the biggest whale on our team just took both of the ones on like the last continent every single time. Like <laughs> he like single handedly won for our team. The rest of our team basically did shit, but uh, shout out to whoever that guy was, I forget his name. What was it? Pound pounding sand? The rest of the team was pounding sand. <laughs> That was me. I was trying, but like I started to notice like nothing I was doing was really having an effect. I was trying to time it so I'd do it at the very last second, but it's like somebody was always sending bigger waves to me at the last second. Like that event was so fun though. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Let's see. Crime wave in Africa failed. Uh, I got one of those too. Let's see some and, popo and that means hostile targets. I might need to buy some more new. The other reason I haven't opened the new like areas, if I open the new area, I, like I'm down. I don't have enough leaders to run all the missions, so I'll have to buy more leaders. Yeah, if I open the next I'm area. At. New surgeon, I have those too. Everything's coming up Millhouse today. One, two, three. Floods. That'll do. Just my soldiers. Boom. It is cool when you have all of your missions going. Like right now I have five out of six missions going. Yeah. And this one, oh hell yeah, this kinda help. Twenty-nine. I've also been doing more of these. I don't know if you ever do the ones where like <laughs> This is a 9% success, but I'm like, you never fucking know, man. One in 10 of these goes through, and then it feels good. What's uh, going on, no, Maggie Hodler and CM Ski? I haven't seen CM Ski in a while. I know you've been busy doing War Take and stuff. But I've been getting riskier with my like my low sends. I like sending the real low ones. And then it's like, when that one fails, it'll just be easier next time, and I'll have more of the actual unit I need. So it like, buys you time. Oh, I see. Also, it's fun at the end of the season. You get to look at like uh, your luckiest mission. My luckiest mission right now is eleven percent. I think I can get lower. Yeah, <laughs> I tried to do that last season. I sent a mission at two percent like fifty fucking times before it passed, just so I could like have it on my on my leaderboard. <laughs> my luckiest Worth mission it. right now is eleven point eight percent. Oh, you have the exact same as me. I'm 11.8. My unluckiest is 96 because I have the plus percentage <laughs> from one of my items for my leader. I went above 95 and I still failed. Damn, that's funny. Jeff says, Whack. sup, 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 Oh, sup, shit. Sup, Mine, sup. Mine's 97. <laughs> oh, you must have like a rare item than me. 
Yeah, maybe. What item is... Because the only way you get above 95 is if you have... Uh, the item... What? What is it? Let's see. Oh, you this know what thing? it is? It's, no, it's because my leader in North America is the celebrity, and it gives me a mission success. Oh, boost. the celebrity gives you more. That's actually... Yeah. I don't know. That's not the best one. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty I good, but also... I think the is still the best. Yeah, I like got... The uh, requirements is a great, a great one. I got a five-star general and then a five-star explorer, which mission speed is really nice, too. Plus 22% mission speed. And then I have team yeah, sizes. Weird. This is the one I want to get rid of the most. He's just there because he earns the most realm for salary. But I'm going to switch him eventually with... I'm trying to level up uh, the professional. What's his passive? She does... He does team sizes. Oh, eh, okay. But I like training speed because mission speed means it's so the missions outspeed speed the training. So when I add the training speed, yeah. then I train the units, and then it, like the bottleneck becomes how many resources I can make. But that's also why I'm on a factory heavy build because I'm going on like a fast building and fast mission build. Yeah, I'm I'm in a Joshua tree right? Oh, well, not Joshua tree. I'm in Palm Springs right now. Yesterday I was in Joshua tree. Uh, Joshua yeah, tree is pretty pictures. fun. Oh, yeah, I can show him if we're out. I'm just on my computer. I'm not awesome. used to like sharing my full screen. Hopefully nobody posted any porn in our Discord. Here's a joint I smoked last night. Cool stuff. It was Harry. Yeah. I call him the Harry Hits. Harry Hitter. <laughs> but this was a Joshua Tree I went to yesterday. Hot tub stream, that's right. That's like the Overlook Peak. I forget what it's called. These all these places had like fun names, but I this one was called Skull Rock. I remember that specifically. Yeah, that makes sense. It looks like a. And I was skull. like, do you think this is what inspired the Lion King? Because isn't Skull Rock the name of where the hyenas hang out in the Lion King? I don't know. I know Pride yeah. Rock was like the name of like their main place. Did I make that shit up? <laughs> I don't know if Skull Rock was the place. They, I, I thought think it they was. Lived at the elephant graveyard. Where do hyenas live? Lion King. Okay, I, I think I was mixing up the, the names there. Yeah, I think it's just called the elephant graveyard. The Outlands is what it's called. Outlands. Okay, well, I'm wrong. For some reason, I thought it was called Skull Rock. But it's Pride it's Rock, and then. Yeah, but there Pride were, like, Rock. a bunch of fucking, like, skulls and shit. Did yeah, they, like, live definitely. in, like. Yeah, they like lived in like a, a boneyard. <laughs> I yeah. think that's why I remember it, but never mind. It has nothing to do with the Lion King. I was wrong. But that's the the skull rock. It's hard to get a picture of it because people are climbing all over it. This is just a nice nice pair of rocks I found. I was like, these are sick. These are called jumbo rocks. There's a sign that said jumbo rocks this way. I walked that way, I saw some jumbo rocks. They were really nice and big. Damn. Jumbo and these are just Joshua trees. Oh, is that actually a thing? That's like a type of cactus or something? Yeah, Joshua trees like it's kind of like a tree with cactus flowers, uh, and they are native to this area of California. The I did not know that. Mojave Desert. Well, there you go. Now you know. It's called Joshua Tree. That's what I did yesterday. It was fun. Let's see. Nice. And what are you doing today? Um. I don't know if we really have plans today. Jackie's still kind of working. We also watched a... Uh, have you seen Don't Worry Darling, that movie? Oh, no. That's on my list of movies to watch, though. It's uh, filmed in Palm Springs, so we watched it. Oh. It was pretty and cool. Was... Let's see yeah, if I can it was find good. it. Yeah, it was actually... I really liked it. I wonder if I can find... Can I pull up the trailer just so we can see some of the the shots? Don't some worry. Some of the Palm Springs. It's also weird seeing Harry Styles act. I don't really want to do any spoilers, but there's some stuff going on with Harry, Sp Harry Styles acting. That's fun. Let's see if we can find some Palm Springs shots. They don't really show the environment much. Oh, here we go. There's like them driving the desert. This is the Mojave Desert. This is where I was yesterday. 
That's where this thing is. It's out in the Mojave Desert. Like that's a real building. Oh, okay. Oh, that but is. the rest of it, the rest Looks of it like. shot like in this landscape, which is like Palm Springs. Oh, here we go. This is a perfect shot of Palm Springs. Like this is Palm Springs. So my parents, uh, like they watch the movie and then today they're going to uh, like go check out some of the places that they shot in the movie. They're going like, to go track down the locations and like see <laughs> where they shot. So oh, okay. I'm not sure if I'm going with them. They might be doing that while we're streaming, but that would be the plan for today if we have one. All right. That's fun. I have to still watch this movie. I, I think Lewis said it was good. It was worth watching. I liked it, but it was weird. It's like a, oh, like guess, a psychological. Was he, good, was he any good at acting? I guess is the um, Harry Styles. I wouldn't have him quit singing, but he did a fine job. Like he wasn't distracting. Like he wasn't. Sometimes people are so bad at acting that's just like they ruin the movie and bring you out of it. He wasn't that, but it was like. I wouldn't go out of my way to praise his acting. I would be like, oh, he did such a good job. He's such a phenomenal actor. It's more just like, yeah, he was there. And it's more like the people he was acting against were so friggin' good that it made him, like, okay. Like, they put him against such great actors that, like, he could kind of just kind of phone it in and, like, it worked. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to say he was good or bad, really. It was just kind of, it was all right. I'll, I'll spoil one part. <laughs> At one part, he speaks with an American accent. That's the weird part. He, like, starts speaking not in a British accent. It's really strange to hear him speak with an American accent. But is it, like, a really plot point anything. that he does that, or is it just random? I mean, I'm not going to tell you, but <laughs> uh, I guess I'll just watch. tell you that happens. Like, it's the movie's really strange, like, as far as it's hard to describe without spoiling stuff. So I'll just say that. If you want to hear Harry Styles speak in an American accent, check out Don't Worry Darling, <laughs> which is definitely not like the main part of the movie, but that does happen. What's going on? we got Senia and Mahala in the house. Did you change your name, Mahala? Have you always been Mahala Spanglish? I feel like you were something different at one point. I feel like it's changed. I feel like it wasn't always that. Yeah, I feel like there's been a bunch of stuff going on in Wax Space. Like Hot Wheels just announced they're leaving Wax. Well, they didn't announce they're leaving Wax. They announced they're launching their own marketplace on Flow. But that's essentially as good as announcing that you're leaving Wax because <laughs> if they're yeah. going to be doing drops on a different blockchain, I doubt they're going to continue on Wax. Yeah, so, that's too bad. That's kind of a bummer. And then I was deep diving. I was like, I don't think Funko is going to do that because they're invested in blockchain production. But then I like forgot how that works. I was like, maybe they're not. I was looking through the, the OIG sheet where they actually I can just pull this up or I don't know if I have it on hand. Let's see if I can search for it really quick. OIG. Yeah, let's do it live. I'm not used to having like my discord searches show up okay mahalo 109 used to be the name okay i thought so you know i'm gonna take down my screen while i search for this because we talk about some weird stuff in this chat <laughs> the person who i sent this information to you and i talk about some stuff that probably shouldn't be shared probably but the, like, the last uh, joke that did was pretty messy yeah it was a little messy the last uh you're talking about the last Hot Wheels drop, right? Yeah. The other that's also what I was saying. Like one of my defenses for Funko is Funko, like the last Hot Wheels drop didn't sell well. Like Funko doesn't really have a reason to leave because they're doing so phenomenally well. Like Hot Wheels is leaving because they're just trying to go make more money somewhere else. Or like, oh, we can I don't know. It seems like every brand in the bear market thinks like hard pivoting is gonna fix it when it's really just like the market condition screwing them. Yeah. Whereas Funko is kind of like so far, like seems to be kind of in a bubble around the market conditions. Just look at the fucking top sales on wax. Every single one of them is Funko for whatever reason. Like people don't really seem to care for Funko, but I do think Hot Wheels isn't as popular as Funko, which also makes sense because like Hot Wheels is very niche. It's cars and specifically cars. Funko has licensing deals with like every major nerddom around so like if you like anything fucking nerdy there's a chance that there's a funko pop for that so i don't think that hot wheels has as wide of a reach as funko personally but it's still disappointing 
uh, as someone who runs a collectible brand on wax, because I was saying the only two people brands really onboarding to people to wax during a bear market is Funko and Hot Wheels. So if you take one of those away, now we're just down to like Funko is wax <laughs> for collectors. Yeah. I think, and I don't totally agree with Jeff who says if Funko leaves during the bear wax is done. I think wax gaming is going to carry on regardless. I'm just worried because we run a collectible brand on wax. So like we want to see larger collectible brands bringing in collectors. And I think wax will be fine either way. But like if the only things on wax are blockchain brawlers and our planet, it's not going to attract the people that want to collect neon space stuff. So I'm more worried from like a running a collectible brand perspective, not from a like I think wax is going to fail perspective because I think wax gaming is has a bright future ahead of it. Like even what's out now with like the alphas and stuff like these games are only gonna get better and i do think they'll attract an audience yeah i agree with winnie too i like the digital funkos because you know i've you know take up space <laughs> not take up physical space let's see this is something i sent to overseas madman <laughs> overseas madman has sent me some wild stuff as far as <laughs> stuff i can't show on stream Shout out to Oversized Seeds Batman. He's in a different time zone, so there's no way he's watching, but I'm a fan of his content. Yeah, let's, let's see. see. Marvel Prices. All right, I found the OIG thing. If you look in the... Uh, what was your takeaway from your deep dive? Well, this is the OIG thing. And I was just like, I don't know. I had a mental fart yesterday. And I was like... I was pretty sure Token Head was invested in blockchain producing, but then it was like, there's no fucking Token Head here. Let me see if I can see them. There we go. So you can like see all the names here, but Token Gamer is the only one I could find. So I was like in the Atomic King chat yesterday, like maybe I'm a fucking idiot. Like why did I think they're blockchain producers? There's no Token Head. But if you go to, uh, I think it's Aloha US, right? I think. All right, fuck, maybe I'm wrong again. One of these fucking ones. One of these ones. One of these motherfuckers <laughs> owns Token Head here. Yeah, here we go. If you look at the US USA, they run Token Head and they run Drop. Well, not US USA, sorry. Uh, Aloha US. So, like. Aloha EOS is token head and Funko's representation on the blockchain producers, but that means they are invested on the blockchain producer side because Aloha EOS is a blockchain producer and they are working directly with token head and drop. And if you see Patrick here who works for token head, works for Aloha EOS as well. So they're kind of like a, a paired thing. But I do think that's good news for Funko because it's like, I don't think Hot Wheels was invested on the blockchain side. And I think Funko's less likely to just ditch wax if they're invested on a blockchain producer. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. And that's what I was trying to say yesterday. And someone's like, they're not invested as a blockchain producer. Then I was trying to find like the data to support my like statement. I like brain farted, <laughs> forgot his Aloha US. So it's not like, you know, obvious just from this screen, which one Funko's involved with. Best place to short as a US citizen without a VPN. You asked this last week, Matt, and I told you, you can do it decentralized. You can do it on decentralized lending protocols. Yep, that's what I do. But you should hit up Max. That's going to really derail this entire stream if we try to talk about that. <laughs> that's the entire stream itself. But yeah, hit up Max in Discord. He's happy. He loves talking about decentralized have, lending protocols. short schools <laughs> across several different blockchains. Uh, On-chain data is hard to scrub. You shouldn't have to scrub the on-chain data but yeah i don't know matt you should just hit us up in discord for that and we're happy to i'm even happy to help you through i just don't want to do it live because that's like a entire tech talk on its own it is tech talk tuesday but we have stuff scheduled and we're not scheduled to talk about how to short sell a market on a decentralized platform like that's not even on wax that's on a different blockchain so <laughs> like it's very very off topic for what we're trying to do right now which if there's enough interest we could do it again and honestly we probably have a video on demand with max explaining the entire concept because we've already gone over it that's the other reason we're not going over it but yeah i think we have gone over it before we, we absolutely we went over all that stuff we went over tranquil and DeFi kingdoms and all yeah, that stuff like months and months yeah, and months ago using, but uh, 
using uh, the money markets to short sell. Either way, we'll we'll help you out in Discord map. I'm not trying to ignore you. I just that's like an hour long talk, and we're trying to max one of the show off Wombat and like how Wombat works and what you can do with Wombat token and what you can do with the Wombat app. And then we also have the hundred wax investment in market analysis. So we have a show scheduled. Believe it or not, we don't just totally wing everything. <laughs> Although it may seem like it. <laughs> wing All it, right, baby. Let's do some marbles so we can get into our tech talk. I also need to, when people start signing for marbles, I need to throw away. My tea is still steeping. It's about to be strong as fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Also, tomorrow, the new, uh, the new Blanco season starts tomorrow. So if anybody's interested in Blanco's, tomorrow is the best possible day. Including Max, you should figure out how to install it on your computer I should, between I today and tomorrow. Work. I mean, I don't think you've hit up their tech support, but I would, that's what I would do. No, I'll, I'll figure out if I can get that. I do want to get into this season. Wombat Wallet is interchangeable with Anchor for EOS. I believe it is on Wax as well. I believe if you click the Anchor Wallet login, you can log in with... Somebody told me that. I, I haven't tried it to verify, but somebody told me anywhere there's an Anchor login on Wax, you can use... A wombat wallet. Oh, I haven't tried that either. I don't use a I wombat wallet. I did notice wallet that wax, so. uh, it looked like the cloud wallet login no longer works on blocks.io. Yeah, blocks. They posted in the uh, the wax Discord creator channel. They're like, if you have anything linked to blocks, unlink it because like they're gonna stop working with wax because we made. That's why they made wax blocks because they blocks.io is like not playing ball with wax. They're trying, probably trying to gouge them again. They keep being like, you have to pay us or we're going to stop posting. And they're like, fuck you, we can host our own block <laughs> block producing thing or whatever, or their own gotcha. blockchain explorer. So I think blocks.io is not going to be the wax blockchain explorer in quite some time. Or not that long, but who knows? Maybe they'll work out a deal. Because I could see it as a negotiation tactic where they make wax blocks and they're like, we don't need you. And then they're like, actually, we'll just pay you less than not have to maintain it, you know? But <laughs> yeah. I'm not the one running wax, so I don't know which sort of negotiation negotiation yeah, tactics they're the using. Drama is. I was I was trying to like claim some uh, wombats from a like that I had unstaked from a web cloud wallet. I think they got stuck somehow, and I was trying to like resubmit the transaction manually and couldn't sign in with my cloud wallet. For, wait, what are we talking about? I already forgot. <laughs> for, for Wombat Dungeon Master, I had unstaked a Wait, few. you can't sign in with your cloud wallet at all for that? No, on uh, blocks, because I was trying to resubmit the unstaked transaction. Oh, manually. now I understand. Yeah. Okay. I Yeah, I don't know how that works yet. Like, I don't know how the tables and the actions work through the other blockchain explorers. I'm sure they do. I just Yeah, don't. that was my thing. I was like, blocks hey, man, is what I'm familiar with. Block. I'm gonna have to mess with it on a different one. Let's see if I can right. get it figured out. Let's do a. Let me show what the prize is. We can give away. I forgot to give away all those mushroom things. We got these pack shards with mushrooms. If you uh, oh, join yeah. the Discord or the Telegram here, there's information. And just hit up. Uh, Green Man is the name of the guy who made the project. If you just hit him up. You can get pack shard B. You need to combine A and B, and then this gives you a pack. But you basically, if you win this, just hit the guy up on Discord or in his Telegram. If you join his community, you'll get the other side, and you get to open a pack. And there's different NFTs from different collections, including ours. So you could pull a Neon Space NFT out of one of the packs. And then the project itself is like a DAO, where I think he says he owns land in Arizona, and they're like gonna let the DAO vote to do it, what to do with it. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but it's definitely an ambitious project. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I understood it too, though, like the summed up version of it. But yeah, I don't know. It's a fun project, and you can maybe win some free NFTs, even if you're not interested in the DAO stuff. So win, win. Um, I'm going to do the marble intro and then do my tea while people join. Oh, yeah. Turn, turn on your volumes down. if you need to turn on your volumes or don't, but here we yeah. go. Let's go. Uh, let's get ready to rumble!
Oh yeah. You can do exclamation mark play if you want to join on this giveaway. Just trying to get my dungeon masters on here in the background. Let's see. Uh, here's a little bit of this tea. It's super strong tea. What up, what up? All right, all right, all right. I'm back. Oh, I watched the uh, <laughs> the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, which is pretty wild. For oh, me, it, was, it was like Eminem got inducted this year to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He performed a bunch of songs, and I realized how little I know about Eminem. He played like mostly songs past 2010, and like five out of six of the songs he did in like a medley. I was like, I've never even heard these songs. Didn't realize how, like, <laughs> how much music Eminem has made since like I don't know. <laughs> since I grew I up listening. listening. I mean, I listened to like uh, the real Slim Shady, and like even when he was like featuring on Day Dre, like what about Dre? And then like I was into like when he did the Stan song, like I had that album. I think that was all kind of like the same era though. Yeah. And then I don't know. I don't want to stop listening to him, but yeah, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I feel like is kind of running out of <laughs> people to induct. They inducted a lawyer. This year, like a music lawyer was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I was like, "Do you need the televises? Like, nobody knows who the fuck this guy is. Like, sure, yeah. induct him, but it's gonna have to be like the Grammys, where it's like some of those don't need to be televised. Like, I'm, I get you want to reward people in the industry, but like, I don't want to watch a 30 minute like thing where you're explaining how much you love your entertainment lawyer. That's fucking weird. Yeah. Also, it's like over. Part. It was over three hours long. If it was shorter, I'd be like, okay, fine, award the guy. But it's like, if you're gonna make your thing that long. I want bangers only. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have actually put the album out if you're gonna be a three hour ceremony here. That's it was fun though. Was it just like on watch... TV or, or how did you watch it? It was on HBO. Oh, okay. We have, we've just been doing like, uh, I brought that HDMI adapter that I have for my phone, but you can also plug iPads and stuff into it. So we've been plugging those into the TV. Nice. And like you know, just the HBO app or the Netflix app or the Hulu app. We've also been plugging Jessica's computer, so we've been watching stuff on there. Nice. They also have cable, but I don't think they have HBO, so we've been streaming. Who else did they induct? They inducted Duran Duran. They inducted Dolly Parton, who is not a oh, rock and roll she... artist. <laughs> yeah, I love Dolly she's, Parton. But she's like... pretty great, but. She's not really That's how you know the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is running out of people to elect. It's like, if Eminem and Dolly Parton are like the best people you're electing this year, <laughs> you've elected all the real Rock and Roll people. Yeah, she's and, pretty uh, great, but I don't know if Rock and she Roll did, isn't what I would call it. She's also cute as fuck. She wrote a song for the induction. She's like, I know I'm not Rock and Roll, so I had to write a song for the occasion. She wrote like a uh, like 1960s Rock and Roll song about how she's like, even though I'm country, I like to Rock and Roll. And I was like, God, Dolly's awesome. Like everything she does is, is just awesome. sweet. And the covers were cool too. Somebody, uh, Pink, and then somebody else. Uh, it was an artist I didn't know covered Nine to Five, and they like. No, they covered a different one, and then her and Zach Brown did Nine to Five, and I don't know. I like that song. I'm working nine yeah. to five. Nine to five is a great song. But that was Tumbled fun. Out of bed and I stumble in the kitchen, pour myself a cup of. What's going on, Mark? Oh, it's, it's snowing now. What up, Mark? That shit. Are your parents gonna have troubles driving over the pass? Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, they're taking the train, actually. Okay, so I don't have to worry about it. Wow, it's snowing. Is there a point that like snow can affect a train? <laughs> I've never yeah, thought it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I find <laughs> it kind of fascinating. I guess the way it works is they have like a, a train go ahead of it. So like they have like a plow train oh, and so then the it snow goes plow and like train. plows through all the tracks and then the main train follows it. Baggy Hodler, congrats. I see. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about that cheddar biscuits. Oh, the cheddar biscuits. 
Uh, yeah, so, because, I mean, the pa if it's snowing here, the, the pass is probably a total shit show, so. Um, That's what I'm thinking. The, the train's nice. It's like, instead of like a two and a half hour drive, it's like four or five hours, but you just kick back and you don't have to worry about it. It's a little long. Five, five, five hours? I guess it's not that bad. Yeah. It's nice because you are just kind of like chilling, huh? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Let's see. Snow plow train. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, at least that's my understanding of how it works. Oh yeah, let's go. <laughs> Train size snowplow, yeah. This is some oddly satisfying shit for sure. Yeah, I know it's got some ASMR into it as well. That is pretty dope. So yeah, I mean the the train goes from it's the same train that goes from Seattle to Chicago, and it goes through stevens pass so you're basically going like through a fucking mountain which is kind of wild too because you know those train tracks were built like 100 years ago yeah that's pretty wild snipping pretty the prizes wild. hope people can actually see me snipping the prizes normally this happens on another screen <laughs> peek behind the curtain see how the sausage is made here I feel like it actually kind of helps because otherwise people are like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Not talking or paying attention to the stream. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm snipping <laughs> stuff. We'd be snipping. We'd be snipping. All right. First prize on the board. I think we've got a couple more of these, so maybe we'll just give a couple of these away. I always forget. We were supposed to give these away a few weeks ago, but they're not whitelisted, so I always forget they're an option. Yeah, again, we'll give away another one of these. The way this works is this is half of a pack. You need to blend it with pack shard B, and then you can pull NFTs, including some Neon Space NFTs, out of those packs, potentially. Uh, the creator of this project just collected our early stuff. I've been talking to him for, like, over a year on the internet, and he's kind of been, like, poking out or poking me with, with projects and stuff. But he has some of our NFTs in there, some other, other collections. But if you win this, basically just join his Discord or Telegram and then tell him you have pack A and then he'll give you pack chart B and then you combine them and then you'll have the actual pack. So that's the uh, that's the business for that. Oops, I just clicked OBS for no reason. Because I'm so used to driving on OBS that that's how I change screens to marbles. But I don't have my soundboard up, but it's time. That was a pretty good, pretty good analog <laughs> version of it. I was about to yell, and then I was like, felt self conscious because I'm staying in a place with my parents. I was like, I don't know what they're going to think if I just start <laughs> screaming. They might run in here. Yeah, we'll see what the. Dad? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I was just saying my dad's been getting into our planet. Like he's playing on the test server and like today the servers went down. He couldn't log in. And I got like, I woke up to a text from my dad. He's like, Hey, what, like, is there a reason? Can you help me log into our planet? It's not working. I was like, you got the bug dad. You, you know, yeah, the cool I, down I, timers. Cool like down. you got I need my cool down. <laughs> yeah. But he's been enjoying it. And I don't know. It's been fun. Like it's definitely like sometimes when games are too fast paced, it's hard for my dad just cause you know, like a first person shooter or something. If you're not super fast to know what you're doing, like yeah. you just get rocked so like i feel like this game is like a pretty good speed for my dad and he also he used to play command and conquer with us like he used to be very into red alert so i feel like he kind of understands like like it's not exactly the same it's more clash of the clans but he gets like when he hops in what he's supposed to be doing and like he's like oh these are units like train the units and he's like yeah i don't know it's fun though I'm enjoying yeah, playing some RP with my dad. A lot better now that I know the order of operations. That first 96-hour cooldown or whatever it is, 
where you're like invulnerable to attacks. I'm like, man, I'm in a yeah. way better place than I was the first time around. I also built a, uh, I built a market and I'm sending my dad minerals so he can like boost start his base. It's pretty fun. I'm like, take I, my yeah, weak tonight, dad. To figure out if we should be mines. aggressive like at the beginning before people get established with multiple bases. What you want to do, I think this right is the on. best strategy that I'm not doing. I went defensive again, which is not the best strategy, is go offensive. And I, uh, the second the shields go down, look for bases with people not playing. So there's people like that have been playing for four days that have 20 droids. If you have 20 droids after four days, that means you're not playing. Like there's no way you have an army with 20 droids. But what might have happened is your fucking supply depot is full. So people are just sitting there with full supply depots not playing. And you can just go rob all their minerals. And that will like put the fuel on the fire of being able to tech faster. And that's like you do that until you can expand to a second base. So like instead of waiting for minerals, you steal minerals and then you use those minerals to rapidly expand to a second base. And then you just rinse and repeat until you have the most bases. That's like the winning strategy. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's some, that's some sweaty pro tips there. That's pretty sweaty indeed. I'm not doing that though. I'm focusing on defense just because I feel more comfortable. Also, because like every time you attack someone, you're making an enemy. So if the person isn't playing and then does start to play and you don't wipe them off the board, now they're building an army to fucking come back at you. So like, yeah. you better be damn sure you can take KFBR people KFBR out. KFBR three nine two. Polish talk ninety. Polish talk ninety. Polish talk ninety. <laughs> if you're gonna attack people, I feel like you need to wipe them out. Like you can't. You can't make the mistake of like robbing someone five times and be like, okay, now I'm just gonna go fuck with other people. Like you have to commit to, I'm gonna build artillery and I'm gonna wipe this person off the fucking board. Otherwise you're just leaving like someone that's gonna wreck you. <laughs> KFBR392, that's funny. <laughs> All right, let's do this marbles. They see Polish dog and they're just like, this motherfucker, Polish dog 90, Polish dog 90, Polish dog 90. This motherfucker is <laughs> trying to fucking kill us. The only guy I'm worried about that is Mixplick. Mixplick, who used to be on the Metaphors team, because I hit him really fucking hard for like multiple days. But... Well, and Rax is, Rax is in this playground server too, and Rax is basically like the de facto head of uh, the Legends of Wax Guild, so that dude knows what's up too. Yeah, I need to hit them up and ask if they can not kill us if we do a Neon Guild on the playground server. So... Yeah, at least have an alliance. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I doubt we're going to beat low if we're competing against them, but it would be nice to at least not just be completely murdered by them in like the first week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they go pretty hard, dude. Oh, shit. Rax's deck target yeah, oh, neon no. kill. God damn it! <laughs> you better not wax. kill my dad, Rax. AFPR392, Rax on wax. Rax on wax. <laughs> yeah. I would also be down to merge, but I feel like Lo wants more experienced players. And That's like why part I of being a straight go at our own pace, but like have a, have an alliance in that way, like a non-aggression yeah. pact, I believe is what you would call it. And then, but and also then as like streamers on the line, then you um, start thinning the herd there. We want to be able to onboard like new people because we're streamers and people are like, oh, that looks fun. Can we play it? We'd be like, yeah, sure. Like throw on the neon tag and play with us. And That's not really the type of guild low is, but like, I don't know, like. It just it's just fun to be able to like include people in our community because we have people that don't own land and stuff and i know low is like you have to own land and you have to be like have this many robots and this many minerals so you can like whale in and it's like yeah i get that for winning but at least for us as like streamers and stuff and like we're trying to build a community it's more fun to play with the people we know even if we're not going to like <laughs> necessarily win as hard it does take quite a bit of coordination when you kind of do when it, like that late game was really fascinating to me because it took like when people had like 10 bases and they were all just like upgraded to the nine like there was a significant amount of coordination to like send spies Did baggy then, win then, two fucking then games in a row attacks, then send really? hackers like within a certain time frame of each other and and then also choose certain times of day that you know would be more effective because they wouldn't be as active i mean it's, it's yeah i was doing that, that when i was hitting mixplick like he fucked up and he put his time zone in his username in the metaphor server he's like mixplick minus four utc and i'm like you fucked up dog i know when you sleep now and that's when i'm attacking <laughs> you at two in the morning my time yeah and also then it's fun the devs are in ukraine so you're going <laughs> oh yeah when the devs are in ukraine i was going just based on what time it is in like kiev or whatever it's like okay it's now 2 a.m in kiev get fucked weeknight de <laughs> or weekend devs <laughs> uh, yeah i don't i we haven't, I don't know, for the, I think Rax, at least for the, for the playground server, I think we'll probably do Neon, but maybe on the next actual server, we'll try to combine Neon into low, like figure out who's actually active in our Neon guild and then try to like bridge them over to low. But 
Yeah, that's true. The lands don't mean shit if you're not actually like spending the minerals that the lands yeah. are giving you. So like activity, even if you don't have the extra production, is is always going to be uh, superior because you're 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 still just you know having to stay up to date on all these cooldowns. I had fun. I think it was with Urax. I ended up hitting someone with freaking thirty thousand <laughs> units. I thought they were gonna beat me because they had like forty thousand units on their base, but I took out their shield and killed all their freaking units. It's like get wrecked. I think it was Greco. Greco is his name. I have no idea who he was. I just saw everybody's attacking him in the channel and I was like, oh, I was finished hanging out with my dad for the night. Like, I got some time to nerd out, so I just sent a massive freaking army at one of his bases. Yeah, and you don't need lands. Lands are just, they, they're they helpful, but they're not necessary. Yeah, you can play without having any our planet uh, assets. Also, you should join. There's a free open server right now. You can download the app on your phone, on your... Uh, I guess if you have like an iPad or a tablet, it's in the Google Play Store and the Apple Store. It's free, and you can play the, the Playground server. And if you do join, you should join in the Northeast Quadrant if you want to play with us, because we're going Northeast. Northeast for any for Neon. That's what I'm saying. Oh, also, Eric. <laughs> I was snooping, and I think you have like 15 hours left until your shield runs out, and you only have like 20 droids. There's people targeting people with bases like yours, so I would like if you don't want to get eliminated from the game, I would try to build some defense as soon as possible. Because I, uh, I saw that uh, Bullshipples, Bullshipples is taking out weak bases. He's doing what I said earlier for the best strategy, which is look at people who aren't playing and just steal all their minerals and then like rapidly expand. And except he's like building artillery and killing those people. So <laughs> if you don't want to get wiped out, I would recommend trying to build a shield and then build some. So I think he's only going after people who like have no defense. He's spying, and if you have no defense, then he'll go after you. But I think if you make it not worth his time, like, and it's going to be a struggle, he'll just move yeah, on to a just weaker player. Enough, yeah, to make it a pain and go for easier targets. Wait, so how much does the land increase your production? I didn't attach lands last time. It depends lot. on a lot of different factors. It depends on the rarity of the land and the level of the land. So when you were leveling the land up with... FTs, like when you're crafting and you got the FTs, you could insert those into your land to level your land up, which increased the mineral. Uh, it made the well, on chain minerals increase. The land. Okay. But it also increases, like, and it's by a huge factor, like the difference between like 10% and like 50% on like a common land if you're upgrading it. So, like, the more you upgrade your land, and that's in the white paper. You know, I can just pull it up now. That's probably yeah, easier than trying to. The, the white paper has all the numbers. And it's based on which. And then each land has a like mineral type, and so yeah, it's whatever land like you have will boost that mineral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Let's I didn't see. level up any of my lands. That's what I spent all of my aether on when we started playing. I spent like forty million aether just crafting FTS because it's like, oh shit, like this is it makes it a huge difference when you're trying to get sweaty. But now I have no Aether to buy the packs. Like, I was pissed they didn't do... I was like, okay, they didn't do the next sale and, uh, like, the land minerals since they just did an Aether sale for robots, and then they did another sale for Aether. I was like, God damn it, when do I get these my minerals that I'm just holding on to? This is way too zoomed in. And do right. the land... I don't think the lands produce minerals outside the game anymore, right? No longer. They stopped the second alpha start in. One second, I just yeah. need to find the lands. Where the fuck I is still the have lands? a good amount of land minerals. So. Yeah, I have quite a bit too. I, I didn't quite th have any context on how much is a lot. So Four now I have a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now I millions. Okay, NFTs of the land. Land NFTs are one of the most valuable NFTs within the R Planet Conquest game since these assets boost your mineral mining potential. Minerals are at the heart of the game. To become an outstanding player, you should seriously think about increasing your mining powers. Numerous and fast troops, strong infrastructure, and powerful defense are impossible without a huge supply of minerals. Attaching the land NFTs to your base will facilitate the mining of many more resources. The boost size of the mining coefficient depends on the land rarity and the level up to which it was upgraded. A maximum of three land NFTs can be attached to each base. And that's each base per terraformer. So like, I don't know, people that are more sweaty than me, I have like seven or eight bases, but that's just me. I could have 24 lands personally. But then there's people like Irish and the Blue Wizard who got up to 100 bases. So they could potentially have 300 friggin' lands, <laughs> like not have enough for all their bases. So like uh, the land, like depending on how active this game gets, the land could get very scarce just based on that. 
But that yeah. also depends on there being a pretty active player base because there is thousands of lands out there. So, yeah, what's the like play? Like, is there if you win or you're like top 100? I guess it's unclear if you like top 100 gets an NFT prize on the first server. They said there is no NFT prize on the playground server. That's why the playground server, like, I'm a little less, I'm a little less worried about being sweaty. It's more just to learn how to play, and I doubt people are going to be doing pay to win stuff where they're like pumping in robots if you can't win anything. Maybe they will, but like. I think it's to be a little more casual of a server, and it's a good yeah. way to like get your foot in the game and figure out your strategy. So when they do open the next open beta that has NFT prizes, you would then have your correct strategy to go wreck that server. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a prize. <laughs> Did I miss? How does it not have the friggin' the land percentages? Aren't those in the white paper? How am I missing it? Huh, I don't know. I thought they were. Is it in minerals, bases, and buildings? I thought it was in NFTs. I think they changed this white paper. Huh. I do remember seeing it in here. There used to be like a chart with like each level yeah. and how much it did. It's been a while since I've looked in this white paper. I think the chart basically was like a level 100 common is the same as like a level 0 rare or something. Yeah, I'm sure the chart exists somewhere if it's not yeah. in there. Oh, it says in development here. Maybe it's because they're... I, you know what it is? I bet they're going to nerf... Like, they're going to change the rate so they don't want to put it in writing. Like, I bet they're going to balance the game and by balancing the game they're going to switch like the rates of how much boost you get and they might balance it back and forth so they probably don't want to put it in writing so people are like yeah i bought this you said it's in the white 60 percent boost which is a lot okay like rack said he posted he says uncommon is 50 percent rare is 75 percent epic is 100 percent legendary is 150 is that at that's at level 200 so if you're at the max level that's what it is but it takes a lot of aether to get to level 200 like none of my lands are level 200 i stop around like level 100 to level 130 there seems to be kind of like diminishing returns after that so yeah mine are i have like like eight or nine lands around that level and i swap them around but yeah i got yeah, i don't to, have uh, any maxed out like i got my epic land to level 100 and it can go all the way to level 200 but at 100 it already does plus 60 percent so the next like hundred levels will cost a lot more than the first hundred level and only get me forty percent more. Since Baggy Holder won this last pack shard, sorry Baggy, I'm gonna pick a different prize for you because I, I don't know like how much variety is there are in these packs. I just don't want you to have the same thing twice. So, what should we give Baggy instead? We could give you a standard capacitor. That's let's, let's see what the value is. Let's try to find something of similar value. It's only worth 17 cents, but that's worth more than the standard capacitor. This marble trophy is worth 58 cents. You probably already have one of the marble trophies, though, Baggy. I'll find something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Baggy has one. Um, I think we could just give you a critter. Actually, Baggy, I think you have the most Cronionbergs. Do you just want a critter craft pack? Is that cool, Baggy? That should be worth like 50 cents. <laughs> Just based on my knowledge of our collection. Transfer mint highest. Ooh, we have mint 420. I kind of want to save that for a special giveaway, though. You'll get mint 421, 419. Yeah, they sell for 80 cents, 6 cents. That's a, a more valuable prize. If you really want the other prize, sell this one, and then you can go get a mushroom back. But. Baggy for his second win will get a Neon Space Crittercraft collaboration pack. Yeah, excellent. All right, we'll do one more giveaway and then we'll uh, Max do his thing. We'll dive into some tech, 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 can you camera on him? I want to see. I want to see Pi. Yeah, see his little derpin tongue. Yeah, check it out. You can't advertise there being multiple little dogs and not show us Max. Oh, look at that little tongue! You're such a little derpy boy. God, that's he's a little cutie. <laughs> hey, Pi. Oh, and he's got a sweater too. 
<laughs> Marcy, you look huge compared to Pi. Pi's tiny. <laughs> it's like they had a head injury and their face got stuck. <laughs> Pi's such a little doof. Pi's cute. Oh no, Pi. They didn't mean it. Come here, buddy. Hey, I had nothing but positive things to say about Pi. Take it up with Mark. Mark is the hater of small uh, dogs. I'm talking shit. It's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, hi, sweetie. I'm surprised Marcy isn't getting jealous. She is. You whenever you pet her around, around Marcy, she oh, yo, just oh, it's giving not you the same over here. Pie the little sweetie. Sweet little sweetie pie. Oh, yeah, with your long ass tongue. <laughs> I'm imitation Bob Barker. I'm I'm a pop and stock. I'm See ya. with my parents right now for Thanksgiving and I. Palm Springs, so like, it's not exactly an Airbnb. I guess they rented a place through their friends, but we're staying like in a rental place. And I didn't want to bring my uh, my boom arm because it can kind of like damage the wood you clank clamp it to. And I don't want to fuck up like a rentals <laughs> a rental rental desk. Yeah, help control the pet population. Spay and neuter your pets. Hi, hi. Yeah, I think she just has a really long tongue. I don't think she's missing teeth. Was she's Bob just... Barker, was he Price is Right? I'm trying to remember why. Yeah. Bob Barker. Yeah. And he was in Happy Gilmore. Oh. <laughs> Excellent in Happy Gilmore. Your star, Pi. I'm surprised Pi is just cool with wearing like a sweater all the time. Most dogs don't like wearing clothes. Pie's, pie's trying to stay warm. All right, let's do a... Let's give away another mushroom, assuming Baggy Hodler doesn't win again. <laughs> Baggy Hodler, don't do better this time. We need somebody else to win. <laughs> oh, Pie, you little sweet. But still enter. We don't want you to not enter. If RNG decides you win again, RNG is king. All right, we'll give away another pack shard A... And I've said it a few times, but we always have people rolling in. You need pack shard B, and you blend this into a pack that opens for NFTs. In order to get pack shard B, you just need to hit up the creator of the project in either Telegram or Discord. If you join the community, there's some sort of form you can enter with your wallet. And if they see there's pack shard A, they will airdrop you pack shard B. And then you can blend it into a pack that you can open, which some of those will have Neon Space NFTs in them. I haven't checked the pools or anything or done any verification, but... I, I assume there's still Neon Space NFTs in there. He told me there would be, but I also haven't like verified that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go. Oh, fuck, I clicked OBS again because I keep forgetting I think there's that. also a wax style farm for those. Oh, yeah. You... There's a wax style farm where you can earn the DAO token for his project, and then you use that token to vote on stuff for the land that he owns in Arizona. Uh, I was going to say That's I that, like, a couple farms. That's how the entire collection works. This collection, if you get NFTs from their collection, you can stake them. And that's like the distribution of their DAO token is through the NFTs that they're either giving out or selling. I don't exactly know the distribution model, but that's what I gathered. All right, so let's do another. It's time. How's uh, Van Nuys been? Does Marcy oh, miss you? Bad. Marcy, do you miss me? I don't think she does. Oh, Marcy. <laughs> she probably only misses me if you guys also leave, and then she misses sitting in my bed crying at me. Yeah, she's a little brat. It's pretty much the same temperature out here. It's like 70 during the day, and then it gets down to like 50 at night. It's been real cold though. Yeah. We've been not like smoking inside because this is a rental or whatever. So got to go outside at like two in the morning when it's cold as fuck to go Dude, smoke joints. Don't and... fuck around when it comes to weed. Like that joint is hardcore. <laughs> that shit was so hardcore. My dad tried to smoke it like after drinking a bunch, and he was just like, "I need to go to sleep." <laughs> 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 he 
he's talked to me for like a minute. He's like, yeah, I'm just, and he just went like passed out. He normally like before he goes to sleep, he like turns off all the lights and locks all the doors. He just like didn't do any of that stuff and just passed the fuck out. <laughs> the next day he's like, are you hungover? I think that weed gave me a hangover. I was like, no, I'm fine. I think it was the alcohol that gave you a hangover. <laughs> I think yeah, they know how to is... party. They party real hard. <laughs> Yeah, that weed is super intense. It's like, I was telling Max, it's like a joint. It looks, I think it's like dipped in oil and then the oil is like covered in keef. It's just like a fucking like, I don't know how they get the keef to stick to it, but it's a joint with just like dipped in keef and it is almost like 40% THC on dry bud, which is crazy. Yeah, it looks pretty fucking gnarly. Yeah, it's funny like that it's a, it's like a bunch of little labeled drawers and stuff. So like, they're very like, um, very organized with their weed habits so like you know they have like a little drawer with their joints a little drawer with their buds labeled and stuff it's a very like professional yeah, they, uh, operation they together. care they came they care more about like indica and sativa than i do my dad's always like what's the strand like what what is a hybrid he's like what percentage of each I'm just like, dude yeah I you're asking questions that. i don't ask so i just smoke that shit yeah man i'm i you know i'm just used to meeting some dude in a parking lot <laughs> just taking what they give me you know the yeah. questions I'm just asking is like, are there fucking hay and seeds in there? If not, then yeah. we're good. <laughs> no seeds, no uh, no seeds, no stems. That real sticky, icky, ooh wee, put it in the air. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I get overwhelmed at the store. It's like they have these little like little chart cards, and they have like you know like a spectrum on like a little sliding scale, and all of these numbers and statistics. I, I mean. You know, your dad's like, no, Eric, he, he knows uh -huh. that shit better than I do. Yeah, that's true. Those stores can be pretty uh, intense. It's funny. Palm Springs, uh, they have like the inflatable tube man on their marble. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's why they have the bud tenders, you know? They have to, they walk you through, so. I oh, have yeah, the bud tenders, yes. Yeah. I like that. That's a fun name for a job. I'm a, I'm a bud tender. Does anybody else know any, we've been looking up movies like Palm Springs either filmed or set. Does anybody have any other ones? Earlier we were talking about a Don't Worry Darling was shot in Palm Springs. We watched that. And then we're going to watch the one with Andy Samberg that's called Palm Springs which is set in Palm Springs, but it's actually shot in Los Angeles. But if anybody else has any like hidden nuggets of knowledge of movies that I'm missing, let me know. The other ones people brought up are like Ocean's Eleven. I guess the scene, like the house they're planning in is a Vegas mansion, but it's actually in the desert in Palm Springs. So like part of that was shot there. And then I guess oh. Mission Impossible 3, there's like a scene where a helicopter is going through a desert. That's in Palm Springs. Oh, interesting, huh? I've been looking for movies that are less like one scene is shot in Palm Springs and more like set or like shows off the, the location. But... Let's see. The crazy thing is Don't Worry Darling is not on those lists. Like it's such a new movie. When you look at f like films made in Palm Springs, it doesn't even come up on the list even though it's like very obviously Palm Springs. I guess Mono Swear Day, congrats. Born. Yeah, Star is Born, they did a... Yeah. Stagecoach, which Stagecoach is in the same spot as Coachella, and Coachella is like outside of Palm Springs. And then I believe uh, they also did like some music at uh, like the city center or whatever. Let's see, the Scorpion King with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> ah, <laughs> really? That was in Palm Springs, even though it's like set in Egypt. <laughs> yeah, I guess the deserts there were Palm Springs area. The Mojave Desert is super deserty. Constantine with uh, uh, what's his face? Neo from oh, the Matrix. Keanu Reeves. Isn't that like Keanu a vampire Reeves. movie? Yeah, uh, I think of. I think Constantine's actually like based off a graphic novel or a or a comic it's, book. It's, it's more like a religious like fantasy movie. It's not like vampires. It's like angels and demons. But yeah, I want to say Constantine is in like the DC universe or something like that. Oh, really? Or like it's somehow like there's like a comic book thing. Don't quote me on it. Uh, hold, let me look this up before I bullshit. it. I remember we were liking um, the movie. Yeah, loosely based on the Hellblazer comic book in the DC universe. Okay, so the the movie was loosely based on a comic of a different character. 
I really quickly want to advertise our neon burn packs. These will be unavailable December 1st. We're closing these and you'll never be able to blend into them again. So that's a week and two days. So you basically have like a little over a week if you'd like to participate in these. Uh, they cost four blend tokens. They're a little spendy, but they only have glow and neons in there. You can't get a common or an uncommon, which is why we made the price more expensive. And in retrospect, we probably would have priced it differently, but people already bought it at this price. So we're like, that's what the set costs. We're not going to like screw over the people who already paid more and let people pay less and devalue what it's worth. So it'll either just be a super rare set not, not a lot of people get, or it'll be more expensive in blend tokens than the other sets. So whether that's reflected in the aftermarket or not, I have no idea, but just know you can't get the set <laughs> without paying the four blood tokens. And there's only been 390 out of 600 blended. So if this is where we end, like six tenths, which is what, uh, three fifths, three fifths of the entire collection is going to get burned. So only two fifths of the collection will be circulating. So they'll probably have pretty rare mint structures. So if you're into like collecting rarer stuff, I think this will be one of our rarer sets. But yeah, yeah I just want to advertise that since. It'll be gone forever yeah. in a week. There's eight different ones to uh, collect from that set, though. It's a tricky one to finish. Yeah, the neon super hard. I pulled so many freaking glows, I was pissed off. I can probably let's see. Wait, I'm not on my wallet. Oh yeah, I we'll have to pull some of the lower mints from the pool. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do that. <laughs> That's going to be kind of a pain in the ass, but I'm still going to try it. My idea is to trade instead of... We're not going to distribute it the way we've been distributing it, which is we just burn our team's blend tokens and send them to people. I'm going to try to initiate trades from the airdrop wallet. So say I pull Mint 1, whoever pulled the highest mints out of the packs will receive a trade for Mint 1. So like if the lowest mint actually pulled was Mint 11, Mint 11 will receive a trade for Mint 1 instead of like making more in circulation. It's like we won't just be minting more... like burning our own tokens and devaluing the stuff by sending extra duplicates to people. It's like, you'll just get a trade offer, which if we're being real, it's probably going to be I'm the KY for almost all of them, unless you get lucky. But <laughs> I'm the KY went super hard on Burn Street compared to everybody else. Yeah, the, burn pretty hard. But yeah, the plan is to open every single pack. So like, we're going to pull all of the cards out of the pools by opening yeah. every single pack, and then we're going to burn all the cards we open out of the packs. So I will just not burn the lowest mints and try to initiate trades. And I guess if like, we'll give people a week maybe, and if you don't accept the trade, then I'll send it to the next person who has the lowest mints. And then maybe like after, we'll, we'll be doing like announcements and stuff, but at some point we'll just be like, if you're not accepting the trade, we're just gonna burn this shit. But we'll try to get the low mints out to collectors. Cause that is one of the problems with just burning everything is we don't want to get rid of all the good mints, but we also don't want to devalue this stuff by uh like I'm fine with the the lits because the lits are so much cheaper. It's only one blend token with like our team burning it and just giving those out to people who collected them. I can stream an opening right now. Oh wait, did I already open them? <laughs> I opened so many the other day. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, open them. I was like, I'm gonna open them until I get a neon. And I opened how many was it? Like one, two, three, four, like ten packs. It was crazy. I have one more pack though. Let's open it. Should I open number ninety nine? I feel like that's a good mint. Do I have, I, I could blend in. You know, I'll just blend into another one. Why not? Let's just do the full, the full experience. And then uh, other news from Neon Space is, uh, I've just went ahead and said we're not gonna stream on Thursday because I know Mark is not available and we're having kind of an early dinner, my family. So I don't want to like fuck that up with scheduling. So Friday will be an off day. Tomorrow I just put TBD. <laughs> which uh, that is because I'm going on a tram ride at like 10 a.m. and I don't know how fucking long it is. So I'm down to stream afterwards. I just don't know what time I'm going to be done. So I don't want to like commit to a time and then not be able to make it. So if your schedule is open max and you're just down to do it sometime in the afternoon, that's good. But also if that doesn't work, we can just cancel tomorrow. But yeah, let's yeah, put it here. I think I'm Friday, um, my parents train comes in like in the evening so i could do like an afternoon stream tomorrow on wednesday correct yeah i'm thinking like 1 or 2 p.m is probably when i'll be back by because i don't think the tram ride's very long they, it's like a 20 minute ride and then you can kind of walk around and then just take it back but 
Yeah, and the, yeah, I mean, I I probably can't do like a marathon like three hour stream because I gotta go no, like fine. get all the food and shit and like. It's also harder for me to do marathon streams like without my streaming setup. Like I'm doing yeah. all right on these multiple screens, but I can at least pop in for an hour or two. Yeah, the, I gotta. I mean, I was gonna go to the grocery store and buy a bunch, buy all the stuff I'm cooking today, but it's snowing like really fucking hard. So, uh, the the grocery store the day before Thanksgiving is like the wild fucking west. Like it is like <laughs> it's intense, dude. So I gotta like. It's like that. It's <laughs> like that scene in Jingle All the Way. And, like you know, uh, fight my way through. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough. <laughs> yeah, it's like the scene in Jingle All the Way, dude. Dude, oh, nice. if we're talking about movies that you like, are a tradition to watch. Jingle all the way. I always watch every single year on Christmas. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> for me it's a uh, Christmas Vacation from Double Mad. Christmas Vacation. <laughs> yeah, I need to watch it. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, dude, it's fantastic. That's pretty good. Yeah, that the holidays pretty... are all pre-minted. The packs are all pre-minted, and every card in the packs are pre-minted. Which is not how we're going to do the next set because we're burning <laughs> three fifths of the set, which is not very like efficient as far as RAM and minting costs go. So in the future, we're going to do hybrid stuff, but for now, everything's pre-minted. But we're learning the hard way: if you pre-mint everything and then it does not get distributed, it costs money to pull. Like every time we pull a pack, it costs a RAM thing to do that RNG pull, and yeah, it also costs RAM to mint it. You get a little bit of the RAM back, but it's definitely not like a good use of our company ram i think this video is broken unfortunately so i'm just gonna have to escape 89 cheddar king motherfucker i have like five of these yeah, you have some off orange <laughs> you're burning the bad rng so mahalo's gonna I mean, close can you, me on can you burn burn street glows into the glow pack? no okay. not right now we could potentially do that though because these cost four and you get three back so that's fine the issue is the new ones you cannot because you can get a glow for two and then you could get three back and we want it to be deflationary. So that's the one that does not work. But these ones cost four. So I could individually add these and I would be willing to do that because that is still deflationary. Maybe that's what I'll do uh, like on the last, like when there's one week to go, be like, and by the way, if you pull a dupe, you can get three out of four backs here. At least like, you know, you're still losing one each time but it gives you more shots because I would burn a bunch of these. I don't need all these dupes. <laughs> I would yeah. burn them just for more chance to get packs and then just burn my way through them to try to get what I want. So I can, I can take the loss of one blend token per bad pull. Yeah. But anyway, Ooh, that's our small ad for that. And our stream schedule, which is in our Discord. Friday, I have scheduled at 1230. We'll be doing the best Thanksgiving side food. And uh, last week, a bunch of people were bitching that we didn't add the cereals they wanted. So if you'd like to, it's in the announcements. You can go ahead of time, look at the tier list. I guess I already filled this out, but look at the tier list. Oh, yeah, and if you think we're missing high. something, that's one of your th one of your favorite Thanksgiving sides or desserts or whatever. Just let us know, and we can add the picture. But it's hard to do while streaming, so don't tell us on air on Friday. Anytime in between now and Friday, let us know, and I'll add them in my free time. But once we hit Friday, cut off of adding new stuff for me Locked at least. <laughs> you so. cut off. What you just You're pulled? Done, kid. Mint one fucking mono suerte, you son of a bitch. He just pulled mint one in Neon Kraken City. <laughs> stolen RNG, stolen Valor. Get out of here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're doing this on Friday. And then Saturday, we do have a super blend. Uh, did we announce what the super blend is? It's uh, the Critter Craft, right? Yeah. 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 So we'll be doing a yeah. Critter Craft super blend. So that's sort of the sitch. If you're uh, curious what's going on this week with Neon Space. It's a little, we're a little out of, out of schedule from both Mark and I spending time with our families for Thanksgiving, but I'm still happy to be streaming and I honestly would be down to stream on Thursday. I'm just, that's another one where it's like even more TBD for me, but I could be down the stream after dinner potentially just cause I don't think we're doing anything that night. Also it just depends on what's like, if there's big news, it's more fun to stream. Like if something crazy goes down in the space or like somebody's like, oh, we just launched like the blockchain brawlers just figured out their fucking staking system and now you can bet I mean, brawl or something any, like. Any given day, there could be another crypto protocol that fails horribly from over leverage. I have that too, yeah. yeah. In time, there could be another FTX at this point. <laughs> uh, green bean casserole's right here. This is green bean casserole. It's actually hard to see. You can't see the green beans. You can only see the 
the melted onion or the onions and the cheese on top. But this is green bean casserole. I'll just say mashed potatoes, gravy, Brussels sprouts with bacon, pecan pie, green bean casserole, macaroni and cheese, stuffing, uh, potatoes au gratin or scallop cheese potatoes, baked potato, pumpkin pie, uh, sweet, potato sweet potato pie. Potato. Sweet potato pie, right? Or what do you oh, call yeah, that? Like, a, yeah, is it a pie? sweet potato yeah, casserole? Sweet potato it's like a casserole, casserole yeah. Maybe, yeah. And candy then this yams, is maybe this is uh, candy yams cabbage. is another way to say. This is a uh, red, red cabbage. No, it's no, this cranberry is sauce. Cranberry sauce. Oh, okay. I gotta add red cabbage then. <laughs> that's very German. I was gonna say I don't think I've ever had red cabbage, but that's also why I want other people to add their stuff because. I'm going based on what my family has for Thanksgiving, so I don't know what the fuck all, all y'all are eating. Add, tell me what to add for you. And biscuits. Yeah, biscuits. Which, biscuits is not something my family eats for Thanksgiving, but for whatever reason, that was on like, popular Thanksgiving foods. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, everyone has like some form of like bread or like roll to kind of like sop up all the sauces and whatnot, but I guess maybe it could be a biscuit in some places and a roll in another. Yeah, we'll be doing that on Friday at 12.30. I pushed back our streaming time to 12.30 because we've literally not streamed on time like once in the last couple of weeks. So I figure we might as well just bump the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let the audience know what's more realistic than, than no, it's constantly not, it's being not late. final. So it's open to suggestions prior to friday so if you want to add your yes. own stuff let us know you have until friday to ping me in discord or ping max or mark and we can add we just need a jpeg or a png basically so if you have a food if you can find us a picture and send it to us we can upload it to the list and we're happy to add any submissions before friday i just added what is the staples of my family's thanksgiving for the most part and it's sides only so like no meat dishes no brisket no honey baked ham no turkey basically no like meat dishes but everything else is fair game yeah. No we turducken the, hamster. We already know the ham beats the turkey. Fucking ham. But <laughs> I think I think that's the end of my spiel if we want to get into tech talk. Okay, yeah, let me pull up my screen here. I'm gonna start off by looking at the crypto market. Oh, am I in uh CRV right now, but let me ch- change over here to uh, oh, cheesecake's a good one. How did I add cheesecake? Oh, and corn on the cob. Yeah, we definitely need to add some more stuff. Can you oh, can you also tag us in a Discord, though? There's no way I'm going to remember this all if you're just spitballing while we're live. So yeah. I'd appreciate if you could tag us. Also, if you can source a picture, that would be great. But we can also source a picture if you can't. But it's just one less step for us. I thought I'd seen, uh, as a quick aside, the, uh, the, the corn kid from the uh, corn dance yeah. is, has thumps. like some sort of... Uh, partnership with green giant which is like a canned corn company <laughs> yeah we saw i think we looked it up yeah on stream one yeah he's days. like the s- spokesperson for them at the moment That's oh yeah no he's like on an ad where they're selling uh aprons that's what we saw he was selling aprons that said like that, corn on them uh, okay okay but yeah we saw that on stream yeah baby we know all it's about corn. the corn updates mark <laughs> we know about the corn kid <laughs> all on that we kid stay very is. relevant uh, he's just very top of mind for us um, but yeah, let's take a look at the crypto market real quick here. So I'm going to start off by eyeing the daily chart for Ethereum here. And you can see this week we had a pretty uh, pretty harsh continuing of the sell-off that we had started last week where it was getting kind of wild. We did retest not all the way back and we're still very much inside this range between these two ranges here of, what is that, like 1350 and 1050. So still kind of bouncing in between here. Uh, but we can see the on balance volume continuing its sell off. So money still moving out of the market. Uh, this uh, stock chart side not oversold yet. Still kind of hanging out in that middle range. Feeling like this could continue to move down, honestly. So uh, based on what the market looks like right now, this last week hasn't added a whole lot of like deviation from the picture of like we think this is going down. And hold on, I think Pi wants me to pick it up. Uh, let me pull. This is my Pi impression. There you go. Okay, she's up here now. Gotta do a Pi. Like- um, but yeah, so it doesn't look like we're getting any like indication of something changing direction here. Still feeling very short uh, with our sentiment, and this isn't really doing anything that we would 
uh consider a flip of that like trend so you can see all the daily you're still very much closing below the middle b band line still kind of like hugging this trend line on the way down uh i think we're still moving further down part of this is going to be influenced also by what's going on in the macro kind of picture you have uh i think it's called genesis is a big company that is uh basically potentially you know let's see yeah Gen oh, genesis yeah they have some serious debt on the books 2.8 billion dollars in outstanding loans on its balance sheets and was about that because they had investments in ftx or is that a separate thing yeah it's part partly that but also like it seems like it's not entirely that i mean 2.8 billion dollars isn't all just one little like investment you know or one position let's see uh yeah and then their parent company is D dcg which is uh another like basically in a uh, hedge fund bank for big institutions within the crypto space so companies like gemini use them for their earn program like coinbase like big exchanges could be you know contagioned by all this nonsense so we'll have to see how that plays out um 2.8 billion dollar debt could be bought out by like private equity still and we'll see if it becomes like this ripple effect. But if it doesn't, uh, the other product that's owned by this Genesis uh, company or their parent company rather is the uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which is uh, it's like one of the few Bitcoin blockchain products that trades on the New York Stock Exchange in the United States. That it's not an ETF, and the SEC in the United States is the Securities and Exchange Commission hasn't uh, approved any assets as uh, for Bitcoins to be uh, ETFs. So basically the only way that, you know, people with like 401k accounts, for example, could invest into Bitcoin would be through such a trust. Uh, either way, that trust owns, you know, billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. And if their parent company is now potentially insolvent or, uh, you know, has bad debt, it's possible that they must liquidate some of their equity to cover their debt, meaning that, you know, potentially you're going to see sell pressure on the Bitcoin and crypto markets to help cover that $2.8 billion uh, debt, which, you know, if they start selling off billions of dollars in Bitcoin, that's definitely going to help drive the market a little bit lower here in the short term still. So because that is kind of still like in limbo and in flux and playing out and we're seeing very clearly, you know, still a downtrend in the uh, in the OBV, clearly not closing anything uh, near uh, closing above middle Bollinger Band lines. Uh, all this looks very like kind of bleak still. I'm going to switch over to wax really quick just to take a look how the wax is living lately. Uh, wax on Q coin looks like we had a big exodus of value here during the little drop from where we were at our resistance around eight cents. And we didn't actually make it all the way down to uh, our line here. So let's move this line up. This is probably the better, realistically, better resistance level. So five cents flat uh, is kind of where we've been touching and holding. And now it looks like we're retesting the middle Bollinger Band line. Uh, we'll have to see if this is going to, you know, start flipping this and, and going back up or if we're going to stay between these two ranges uh, in the coming weeks. Based on what we're looking at on the Ethereum chart, plus the macro picture of like Genesis being broke and, you know, billions of dollars in bad debt potentially needing to uh, look to liquidate uh, crypto assets, I think we should keep our sentiment short for this week. And uh, based on that, we could go into our 100 wax investment. So let's do that next. Um, we started with 100 wax, and let's start flipping over here. DeFi box is one of the positions of this wax still. So if I jump over here right now, we have exactly 100 wax flat now. So we had started with 100 wax. We had to think like 104 wax or something in here last week when we uh uh when we shifted some of it out to the what is it wax wombat pool um so we still have 100 wax here and like i said i think we might see this market continue to move down uh and oh uh, here you can see also why it went from you know 104 to 100 is because about seven each one of these is one day so about seven days ago the price of wax was a little bit lower it's a little bit higher now 
So some of our wax was sold back into uh, USDT. And we can just take a look at that right here. So yeah, we can see still we started with 36 and 4, and now we're up to 50 and 3, 1, 315. So down about $1, but up, uh, what is that, like 14 wax. Not too bad. Still riding. I like this position. It's a nice hedge uh, against the price of wax falling. Uh, it's a nice way for us to earn more wax on the way down. And since we are kind of under the impression that this coming week is going to see us moving down further, uh, let's let this one ride still. So the next part of the position is over on um, Taco Swap. Let me log in on Taco Swap. And over here we have actually something to claim. So we go to the DeFi wallet. Yeah. Sign in here. Okay. And then over here we have a position in the Wombat Wax Pool. It's actually almost exactly the same value as it was when we started the 16 on the wax side. So about 32 wax total. And then here we have our uh, CMW pool. This last week was about 16, and we cut it to uh, 10 on the WAC side uh, and added that 6 to the Wombat pool because we wanted to like rotate a little bit. But let's claim some of the rewards here. So account and rewards. We got 37 Wombat token and 14 CMW. I'm going to claim both of these. And then I'm going to continue to compound this week into the wombat pool it's still going for the full week if we go we can check here on meal uh what the current reward rates are and how long they're still going for so you can see that one this cmw one is 15 days still and then here we have another 25 days so we're still good for the next seven days to participate here uh this pool is also getting much deeper it looks like 175 wax 175,000 wax now um, so to do that, I'm going to go to swap and I want to swap my uh, CMW into wax. And then I'm going to take the wax that I get from this and use it as the counterpart for the um, for the wombat pool or for the wombat compounding here. So there we go. Uh, it'll update in a second. If I toggle these back and forth, that usually speeds it up. There it goes. Uh, and then now I can check here. If I add that, 46, so that covers it. So there we go. We'll add that to the pool here. And then I also noticed something that we missed last week. Um, there is part of this position uh, over in Honey Tokens on the, um, on the NFT Hive page, but we're just going to let the Honey Tokens sit right now. But when we bought those Honey Tokens, we placed a limit order that uh, we actually haven't checked on and it hasn't filled yet. So if, if we come here, we can actually check. There's a, a portion of this wallet's balance that has been kind of locked in this limit order. So let me pull this up. I'm launching the wallet, uh, the DeFi FTW. And then you can see the way to see that kind of order on here would be you go to wallet, open orders, and you can already see here I have two buys open. So you can see I have like a seven wax position waiting to buy more honey. Uh, it's been open for several weeks now. I don't know if we're going to get this one. So let's just close it and use that seven wax to do uh, some other type of uh, yield earning. So we just close that. Uh, I guess we'll close both of these. Uh, we had opened this Ludio one also to exploit like a huge uh, dump in the price. It never filled, so we can come back here now and, and try something new. Uh, let's come back out. So I'll go back to tokens now. There we go. It's pulled all my wax out of the pools. And uh, let's take a look at which other pools are going on over at Taco right now. If we want to go all more into the Wax Wombat pool, I'm not sure. Or if we want to try for one of these higher interest pools for a week. Let's take a look at what's available. So I'm not familiar with some of these tokens. And I'm also not a huge fan of tokens that don't have like 
uh, deep liquidity or that are paying uh, absurd APRs and I'm not familiar with. So I'll probably not jump into this one because my concern here is with the APR this high, oh, well, first of all, we wouldn't be able to last for the full seven days. So that's already the first problem with this one. And with an APR this high, I would expect that when this time runs out and people exit the pool again, the tank, the price will tank. So I'm probably going to stay away from that. Uh, let's see what else there is. I don't recognize much of this. CMX is the Metaforce token, but EFS I'm not familiar with. Uh, Egg is from Don't Count Your Chickens. And is paying a pretty decent APR. And then CMW is the Credit Metaverse token that we're already a little bit in. Uh, it's doing 353. But it's also been kind of falling in value pretty uh, consistently. And I'm not sure that I have a reason to believe it's going to stop uh, because it's mostly just printing out as a reward token at the moment. And there isn't like a utility with a big enough community around it for the burn case to be uh, counteracting the sell pressure from the. Yeah, uh, I don't think the user the, base is high enough yet to really yeah. get enough people using and burning the token. Yeah, I like their burn cases. I just don't know that. You know, we're looking for moves to go from week to week, I would say. And uh, I don't know. Personally, I feel like I'm still digging the Wax Wombat pool quite a bit. It's uh, it's pretty deep liquidity, too. It's, it's quite deep. And then uh, the Wombat token itself also can trade here. Wombat tokens trade on QuickSwap, Uniswap, MEX, and KuCoin. So you have like not just liquidity on Alcor and on Taco and DeFi Box and like the scene on Wax, but you also have really deep liquidity on stuff like QuickSwap. Uh, Unis like QuickSwap was like three hundred thousand last time I checked, like dollars worth of liquidity. Um, which is you know this is a lot, one hundred and seventy five k Wax, but this is still like under twenty thousand dollars total in this pool, you know. So. The pools that exist for Wombat Token outside of just the Wax ecosystem are very robust, comparatively. Um, I think I like this pool, so let's let's do this one some more. I'm just gonna go to the swap and take whatever Wax we just got from uh, earlier and swap this into Wombat. It's gonna be a three point. Let's see, 3.5. So it'd be like 3.95. I'll just do 3.85. That gets me another 106 wombats. And let me do that. So I have to take that drink. Okay, and then I can come up here to the liquidity tab and you can just add it from here to the pool. Let's see, there we go, 407. Nope, so I got to toggle and go 107. There we go. That I can actually cover. And now I think we should leave that for this week. Ooh, that's pretty much the position this week is going to be riding the Wombat Wax Pool the CMW wax pool and keeping our uh, wax USDT position uh, open over on DeFi box is, is the play for this wallet right now. So let's do a quick recap of where we're at with our hundred wax. So we still have a hundred wax in value over on DeFi box. It looks like, and then it looks like here. So 21, uh, you kind of double these numbers cause it's the same on both sides. So this is like 42. Uh, plus, we'll call that 9, so plus 18, so 50, 60 wax-ish uh, here. So that would be 160 wax, uh, plus the, like, two honey that we also have over on uh, on an NFT Hive. So we've turned our 100 wax so far into 160 wax in, oh, around five months or so. Uh, not bad, like 60% up. Like at this rate, we're on track to like doubling our wax in a year, uh, which is you know, phenomenal, good. phenomenal performance. Still 
able to make profitable trades in, even though the markets are you know dropping and again i think the big uh like way to go about doing that is to have a clear objective and our objective was to earn more wax over time and so you know it was easy to kind of achieve those goals when we set them on the front end um that kind of covers the wax investment and the overview i would say of the market i want to also look Do really you want to check out wombat here. yeah i was going to get into wombat wombat look, look at the wombat token so the wombat token that we're farming here is the uh is like the utility token for the wombat uh wombat like game or wombat wallet so the wombat token right now exists like i was saying on uh polygon and on wax at the same time and you can trade them on you know quick swap this is a polygon uh, uh uniswap i think this is the polygon deployment of uniswap and then uh mexc and qcoin are both centralized exchanges and so you can actually you know buy and sell wombat tokens on qcoin as well uh, let's go I think if you uh, wanted to withdraw from Qcoin or deposit into Qcoin, it's looking for the Matic side of the Wombat token. So the Wax side of the coin is still relatively new, but they are the same token and rel are like relatively interchangeable as far as their um, utility goes. And that utility currently is you can earn the Wombat in their playground within the app. Uh, you can stake the Wombat tokens uh, staking gives you like these VIP levels uh, based on like how many you've staked, and the VIP levels affect the in-game earning for the Wombat. So if you've ever played like Wombat Dungeon Master, uh, you're you know you, you maybe know about like every week there's like uh, a reward paid out in EOS or like a uh, a wrapped Bitcoin token that you can get a cut of based on how you know how much you've mined. Uh, well, if you do that same amount of mining with a higher VIP level of Wombat stake, then you would earn, you know, a higher return and a higher cut of that week's reward uh, for being a, you know, a higher. Wow! So that's another one of their uh, of utilities. Money. I like. I mean, I feel like that's kind of cool. And then the governance part is also another set, side of it. So if you have, you know, your staked assets your staked wombat tokens and you're playing their game and stuff you get all the bonuses that like you get from having the higher level stake but you also get uh the ability to vote in the uh like governance side of things so this is the uh this is the wombat voting uh like portal that you can get to and it, you can do it all from like the phone app too but here's like some examples of like the recent votes yeah, that went through so you yeah. have like <laughs> So you have things like made on stream getting voted for uh, voted in for like next season or uh here here was one of like which which of the time durations should get a boost for the upcoming season so the one hour got the bigger vote uh and if you wanted to weigh in on a vote like that you know you can do that with your stake wombat tokens which i feel like that's pretty cool and then they're also um you know hinting at a bunch of future utility for wombat stakers and uh, future use cases for the Wombat token that aren't really like public yet. And again, I think uh, we've talked to the team, like Adrian, I think is really like a competent person who really knows his shit when it comes to like this, this space. I think, you know, he's been involved in crypto for a long time, like longer than most people I've ever talked to and has experience, you know, building exchange platforms for Deutsche Börse which is effectively the New York Stock Exchange in Germany. So like uh, his credibility and, and his ability to, I think, build the value that he's hoping to build for his token holders uh, is there for me enough that I'm willing to like, you know, make a little bit of a, a gamble play into this Wombat token. Below Bard says, if I could log into my Wax wallet on the Wombat app, I'd be a lot happier. So you don't like using the Wombat wallet specifically? Oh, I see. Yeah, that's true. I did make a new wallet for my Wombat. Like, I just used the Wombat app and have it, like, creating me a brand new wallet. And I use that now separately from my other, like, cold wallet and hot wallet and all that. So it does add, like, another wallet to interact with. But I don't know. I've been doing that just because there is certain, like, uh, games and certain, like, things that you really yeah, need a, a hot, like, mobile wallet for. And I didn't have a mobile wallet yet. So I definitely 
liked that and then signing up for the wombat wallet itself was also like really straightforward like i didn't have to stake any resources willow bar just says they don't want to do that because they already have a wallet leveled up in dungeon master so like they want that yeah that I so like they leveled up the web cloud wallet for dungeon master so now if they want to go use the wombat stuff they have to like start over from scratch and that's like you know yeah, weeks if not that, months of grinding that goes down the that drain that does suck my my level like 12 wombat is now back to like level three since i switched to my other one which isn't great but yeah i think there should be a way to like import private keys into the wombat wallet but you're not able to export private keys from the web wallet anyway so no matter what that's that's gonna be a no dice willow bart's at level 40. <laughs> Yeah, okay, and that's what I wasn't that's that beefy as fuck. Because, like, level 10 took me a little well, while, but not that long. Yeah, that's, that's hardcore, Willow Bard. You crushing yeah, it. But I, I definitely like the, uh, uh, the like, app, too, that has all these, like, different games. and quick You know what could also of, like, fix that? If you could stake your Wombat to another person's wallet or something, maybe. Yeah, you know, that like, could be a, a solution. If, like, you there. could stake, like, if you have a wallet... A wombat wallet, but you can stake it to a web cloud wallet from the wombat wallet. Like if they built the interface that way, then you wouldn't necessarily have to log in with the web wallet. But I don't know. I don't know if that would work. I feel like it'd be easier if they just let people log in with the web cloud wallet by like a long shot. <laughs> but they, yeah. I don't know. They're probably also trying to push their own wallet, so I don't know if that's in their like best interest. So it's hard to say. Right. I do like uh, like I feel like their their whole like experience is really user friendly and. Uh, like I got a friend who's like very not technical and he was like asking about NFT stuff and I was like, oh, make a Wombat wallet and I'll send you some NFTs. And it actually like, you know, he was able to figure it out without me having to walk him through it, which is like, great, that's awesome. That's what I'm looking for when it comes to like, if I want to send somebody who's never had an NFT an NFT, I can't be like, oh, let me explain to you how like staking to network resources works, you know? Or how so to like, source wax on a decentralized yeah, <laughs> yeah, exchange. It's... So the fact that like a clean wallet looks like uh, you start with 200 per day, you get 200 transactions per day for free, just from like the wax kind of like pool of, of transactions. So all of those things, I think like, you know, that mixed with the utility that's already out, mixed with the promise of the future utility, mixed with the like, existing deep liquidity like if we go to quick swap here like let's take a look at this one so we got quick swap here we go matic usdc where's the usdc matic pool wait let's see if it'll show me if i do like dai into wombat Here it is. Yeah, $359,000 worth of liquidity in this pool. And with a daily volume today of $113,000 traded. That's just on QuickSwap for Wombat USDC pool. Hi, Pi. Hey, Valor and Vellum asked, did, did you miss my candy pulls? Jeff took over. Jeff trolled Max for you, so don't worry. Max, <sighs> Max got sufficiently trolled in your absence, but we did miss your pulls. Yeah, it was a... Uh, it was like you're gerrymandering off, but on steroids. We got backup trolls. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but Good. yeah, this 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 is a buttload of liquidity. Uh, I haven't actually checked the Uniswap one. Let's take a look at that. Are you guys asking where is the best place to stake Wombat for Wombat return? Is it like better to do the liquidity pool, or can you stake it directly? Don't they have a way you can stake it directly to their own like interface? Yeah. So that's here. If you're in their Wombat interface and you stake to like your uh wombat if you stake your wombat either on wax or polygon it that's what unlocks like your ability to participate in the voting and your like uh the vip levels so those the rewards that you get for that for the, that type of staking it's through gameplay directly, and not you don't yeah, get wombat not directly back for it. wombat so it depends on your gameplay so uh, what that does for example is like it boosts uh like when you're earning that uh that cut of that weekly reward in wombat in the app the way you earn that cut is by committing the like the in-game like asset called wombucks and you get like a boost in how many wombucks you get i am the ky wombat says state. getting vip in dungeon master was more beneficial than the lp on docker swap 
but it also probably depends on what level you are, how frequently you're yes. running. Like the more actively you play the game, the more VIP is going to benefit you. So if you play Wombat super passively, it's not going to help you that much. But if you're playing it super actively and have a big stake, it might help you more than the LP. But yeah, it, it also yeah. depends on how much what your LP position is. Like Max's LP position might outpace what I'm the KY is earning in Dungeon Master. But like again, depends on <laughs> how often you're playing and what stake you have in each. Yeah, and then uh, I think the staking directly into your VIP thing doesn't actually produce wombat tokens directly. It's like you can get you earn more, but you have you earn by. I'm the KY so says like, if you go to Dungeon Master and click the upgrade to VIP, that's the staking that gets you VIP. Yeah. And Uga is saying VIP two is what I need. One isn't anything. So maybe can you go over the differences between the VIP levels yeah, and what you that. need for each one? Here, also. I don't know if it's hard for other people to see. If you can zoom in on the website, like I can't read anything on your screen. But oh, I'm yeah. also, I don't know, the screen's kind of pixelated. Like, here. Mark, can you, like, Mark, can you be eyes? I can't tell if, can you read what's on Max's screen? I can, yeah. Okay, then we're good. All right, nice. Okay, let's see. So this is the. So I need Wombat. I swap on Alcor. Um, you can swap on. I don't know what is a deeper pool, Taco or Alcor. Another thing though, who was telling me this? Somebody was telling me in our chat that like Taco is deceiving. Like when you do the swap, it tells you what the swap would be without fees, but then like the estimated return without fees, but then it adds the fees. So you don't actually get what it says you're gonna get. Cause it's like showing you what the swap would be with 0.1 fees, but then it is the 0.3% fees if you don't have the VIP. So like, it misleads oh. you into thinking you're going to get more and you don't, which I haven't verified that, but that's kind of fucked up if that's the way it works. Like it should tell you yeah, the amount of discount you get, not the potential discount. Yeah, Uga says 5,000 Wombat. It's 5,000 Wombat. Is that what it is? Let's see. 5,000. You can get that for 180 wax right now. That's honestly yeah. less than that's $18. Like, so that's under 20 bucks as far as like fiat value right now. It's like yeah, half of that, right? That's like nine dollars. They also need to show gains and losses and meals. I agree with that. It would be nice to see. Although, yeah, like, if we're being if we're being real, it doesn't show you your gains and losses that well in like D five. At least it tries well. on Alcor. Yeah, Alcor tries. It doesn't work super hot, but I don't know. Even like Uniswap and stuff. Like when I was using it, I always just got in the habit of screenshotting it because like a lot of those interfaces don't actually show you what you want to see as far as your own investment progression. Yeah, let's see if I can find this. Uh, where's that list? For sure, you like? get. I do recommend if you're entering a new protocol and you're unsure, just screenshot it and like I DM myself. I have a second Discord account, the Gyrating Hips, my like band account, and whenever I enter an LP position, I DM myself that so it just lives on Discord. And then when like months later, I'll go back and scroll through my DMs and be like, okay, this is where I entered, which obviously isn't ideal, but like. That's not a problem exclusive to Taco. That's like a lot of DeFi interfaces are not set up to the point where they're monitoring Here's your the positions in the way. So it looks like, yes. So 5,000 Wombat gets you to level two VIP tier, which boosts your Wombucks earnings by 25% and gives you the uh, Wombat's Prime, Wombat Prime like features that include like a uh, uh, what is it like the pack drops right don't you get a bonus yeah, pack yeah, like, drop I think there's a pack drops at like higher levels too there's like guaranteed specific packs that you get for I think it tells you on the web wombat website when you're upgrading right isn't there like a list of what each one does each tier let's see like if you go to upgrade to VIP whatever that button is I feel like it should yeah let's see how do you sign, sign up for VIP, like the staking page? So, uh, uh, there Is it the be plus like button? A... Is it the plus button next to total Wombat balance? How about swap? Uh, it gets me to swap. I'm not staking any, so I don't know where it is, but... Sign in, yeah, cause I think it's because I'm signed in as my web wallet. I don't know if it'll let me... Can you not stake as a web wallet? Can you sign in with your Wombat wallet so we can see? I can, but it's on my phone. I'm not sure if it'll let me do it on the, uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see when I... Let me see if I can pull it. Cause I feel like they definitely just had like a list of all the tiers on the website. 
Wombat. There's not... Yeah, I forget where it is though. I also can't even see. Yeah, hold on. Is it just wombat.app is the website? Wombat.app. Let's see. Uh, Pi is snoring next to me. Let's see. Change log. No, there is a fucking. You're right, there is a place that it said. And it's not. I'm not even able to person. find it either. It's not in the white paper. Right. It's, it's like, funny there's a button that? that says white paper and learn more, and they both go to the same white paper. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Actually, no, they don't. They go to different white papers. Maybe the white paper has it. Their white paper is pretty not technical. Right? Oh, wait, never mind. Here we go. I was missing a bunch of sections. Utility of Wombat? Let's okay, here we go. Is. This has the rewards. I found it. I'll... DM you this, Max. All right, hit me. I believe this is the right page. Utility of Wombat, it should be in your DM. The white paper is different than the uh, the medium, which didn't have it. Let's see, is this not the same spot that we just had up? VIP tier. Yeah, this might be the same one that I just had up. Does that not tell you the benefits though? I can't read your screen. Yeah, it is it is this one, but there's like a more up-to-date one. They've updated this to have a 6 and a 7. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, you, you could just post the link. Staking.wombat.app slash wax. I think you were on that page. Staking.wombat.app slash wax. I said scroll to the bottom. We'll do it live. Fuck it, everybody. We'll get there. <laughs> scroll to the bottom. Oh, there it is. There's the VIP. Ah, ones. there's the later. Okay, yeah, here they are. Okay, this is what we're looking for. So you got the benefits are yoink, here they are. Okay. Wombat staking perks. So yeah, you get 5,000. This is where we got the last page too, and then it goes all the way up to 5 million. You get a 300 benefits that boost. tell you below down there. And then below VIP is drops. here's you get the VIP. So you need level packs. three to get. Level three is what you really need to get. Yeah, that's the one VIP I VIP drops and VIP packs. That's the one I've staked so far on my new Wombat wallet edit, and that's 15,000 uh, tokens. Which... Ooh, level 7 gets to choose what collections get added. That's pretty cool. It's pretty expensive to get those lower, the higher stakes, the higher tiers. Yeah, it's relative. It gets pretty pricey. Level 7, you, you also get to be part of like the, uh, what is it? like team calls to the dungeon master teams and like you, it's it's a pretty like decent like you know finger on the pulse of wombat but you don't like wombat the company still gets the final say and stuff it's not like you can buy your way into oh, like telling them what to do but it is pretty cool oh and then yeah you get material boosts too for all of these different levels Old Mankey says, my objective is VIP 5, so I don't have to buy the season passes. I think that's not a bad one, too, because the season passes are pretty cool. That's like the uh, it's like the battle pass where you can grind out rewards. And that's sort of also what like, eventually I'm looking for, because, I don't know. Yeah. I like any game where I'm like continuously grinding towards something. Like When Alien Worlds added NFT points, it made it much worthwhile to like, keep clicking the button, because I was like, oh, now I'm progressing through a season. It doesn't just yeah, feel like I'm... Yeah, about seeing your progression that just kind of, like, triggers, like, a gamer achievement. And, like, Xbox Live just, like, burned achievements in my brain. And, like, the gamer score. I remember the gamer score was, like, such a big deal. Yeah. Oh, uh, damn. There's some pretty big stakers here. This guy's at almost 2.7 million. Damn. damn. That's uh, quite a bit of one but that. There's a, a Dot Wham who's doing a million one by a lot. He's uh he's got level six staking. Wait, go back up. I think that's Funko. Freddy Funko. Yeah, Ojo Ojvu uh, yeah, Freddy right. Funko. He's in our community. Freddy Funko. He's probably like not... one of the biggest he's the guy that bought all those ultra rare one of ones 
because they were staking in Wombat when like he's just swept the floor of all the ultra ones to one for that one collection. That's Freddy yeah. Funko. Shout out. I mean, I, Good collector I on Wax, cool like guy. Of of the like games on Wax, especially like Wombat is like a functional game with a real like community around it. They're also present on multiple blockchains and have like real partnerships with other like uh, web three kind of game developers. I could see their like wallet app also being kind of like blockchain agnostic. Like it's not tied to the success of wax as much as other wax games are where I would say like, if, if wax isn't around in a few years, that doesn't mean wombat won't be, you know, wombat could absolutely continue on its trajectory doing what it's doing. Uh, and facilitate that kind of stuff for different blockchains. Like, there already are games you play through the Wombat Wallet uh, and through the Wombat app, like on Binance Smart Chain and on, on Matic and stuff. So, I'm a fan of this one. I like all the stuff that they're building. I do like uh, feel a little bit biased from having spoken nice. with. Uh, Mahala got a. Sorry to interrupt you, but you got a glow neon spice number 67. You're two minutes away from getting the the mint 69, but. Neon Spice is one of my favorite signs in the set, so yeah, me I'm happy too. That one. They mentioned Damn, something about Wombat World, so maybe they're going to do some sort of some sort of metaverse. I could be top ten with my, with my <laughs> <laughs> leaderboards and Max. He's getting the whale, the whale itch. Kid, I, I guess if I sold the wax side too, that's like six six hundred something thousand. That would put me top. I would be below here, but there's a big gap between five and six. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind having on Adrian and team again. It's been a while since we talked to them, especially since Sasha left, because we talked to Sasha the most out of everybody, but he's no longer on the team. So yeah, I think that was another part that like it biases me towards the Wombat token. Because speaking with Adrian, I felt like he really knew what, what he was talking about, has a real like vision for like how to achieve what he wants to achieve, and is uh, like a capable person. <laughs> And like feels like genuine at least and when we spoke with him uh yeah, unlucky but yeah I, th I like that and seeing the stuff that they've built so far and like again recently talking to a friend and having them on board into a wax wallet through wombat and hearing the feedback from them and how easy it was for them i, I like all that stuff it's making me uh bullish on the wombat like project longer term Oh, oh, oh pie, you little snoring. Little snorer. I like the Wombat team. I'm still, I don't know. I got a little burned out from Wombat Dungeon. It's pretty repetitive and, like, not a whole lot of strategy involved. So that's sort of what I've... I don't know, I'm waiting yeah. for, like, more to the game to be added before, I feel like. Like, if they get it to, get it to where Realm even is, like, Realm really sucks me in because it just feels like I'm working towards something, which, like, I feel like there is zero strategy for Wombat. I'm just clicking the button as often as possible because the more you click it, the more you make. And there's, like you know <laughs> not really a better strategy the strategy is just if you can click it every five minutes that's the best you can do whereas yeah. like realm there's a bunch of different strategies as far as like the way you spec your team and the way you spec your your leaders versus the the helpers and stuff and like i don't know yeah yeah i, I do like think wombat that, but like, i got burned out of just clicking the cooldown like yeah it's definitely still a very much a click farmer but i feel like their whole like, I do the uh, I do six hour runs like, Valor and Vellum. I do a six hour run when I wake up and a six hour run when I go to sleep if I remember. But even that I've been kind of slacking on lately if I'm being honest. Novo Pangea is my game that I've been trying to do at least once a day. I do Novo Pangea once a day. Yeah, same. I like that one too. That grind. I've been getting more into. I've been doing the six hour runs on uh, usually three times a day on Wombat now that I have it on my phone. So like trying it with the phone app also really like makes it a lot easier for me to like do the runs and mess with it is the season over i didn't even check if i no it was still going earlier today i'm gonna send my duders out let's see i got points yes points count them let's there's eight days left all right well now my guys out for another six hours Get in there, Wombat. I believe in you. Let's see. I also have been uh, waiting for Nova Rally. Darn, if we're not man. streaming tomorrow, that means we're not going to do our Nova Rally stream, which is... Oh, no, we might stream tomorrow still. I'd be down to do some Nova Rally later in the day if we do. Yeah, I could be into that. I also want to try out the new uh, 
Waxel World game. I haven't tried that yet. Oh yeah, new, uh, maybe tomorrow we should aim for Blanco's new season. We can do some Blanco's. We can do some Waxel, and then we can do some whatever the other thing. Nova Rally. Eventually, I like to do blockchain brawlers, but they just delayed the launch of like the betting game. So I feel like it'll be more fun once, like they said, Thanksgiving they're taking off. So next week you're supposed to be able to stake brawl, and then once you have staked brawl, you can bet brawl, and then that part of the PVP system will go live, which is sort of what, I, what I've been waiting for. Waxel so like, released that side scroller thing, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about. We might try oh, that nice. tomorrow. Yeah. That looks pretty sweet. Yeah, I agree. I wonder oh if yeah, can... the. I'm, it looks like I'm going to earn a quarter of an EOS for this week's Wombat reward, rewards for the Womb play stuff. I think it's it's all like kind of fun and uh, real easy. Like even for the non NFT games, like they have this whole thing of like, oh, if you download a game, you get some of the Womb bucks. You know, like just to like download a partnered game, kind of like as in uh, imagine that's like ad revenue for them. But it, it works. It's getting me to download games. Uh, play them for longer than I would normally just to get some of the one bucks. <laughs> just fun. I guess we can try Waxel Rush actually right now. Why not? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's like, see. We'll try it tomorrow, but fuck it. We'll do it live right now. I haven't even tried playing this. I'll probably suck at it, but maybe I'll be the best in the world on my first try. One way to find out. Uh, I guess I'll turn on the music too so we can hear it. Yeah, let's see. This already looks really cool. I don't know if there's sound. Yes, there is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Random Kings is best was 5,000 points. So you're talking about the Waxel Rush, right? Let's see how. So somewhere I can adjust the volume on this mother trucker. I'll play my music and then their sound effects. But that's not what I want to open. There we go. Press A for space to jump. Oh, Jesus. That's way harder than I thought it was going to be. This is not going oh well God. so far. How many points was that? 5,000? How close did you get to 5,000? I got 651. What? So oh jeez! Oh god, that was embarrassing. Okay, I'm not the best in the world on my first try. Let's go to round two. You need to own a Waxel Ninja to use it, or is that I just? Know. I have a Waxel Ninja. Okay. I guess I want to play another round. Does it cost me something your to play? Wax... So is that your Waxel Ninja, the character that you're moving around with? Is that him? No, this is just all gray. Oh, okay. Uh, what? what does the mouse do? Jump? Yeah. You can like triple jump, it's just hard to time it. Oh bullshit. No uh... Oh, it gets faster and faster too. This is intense. When is it gonna drop me? Oh hit the space bar. I'm dumb. No! Oh, shit. No! Oh. <laughs> I got three thousand, yeah. right? Who had? Who said they had five thousand? Yamster, oh no, Random King said he had five thousand. I'm coming for you, Random King. <laughs> Thirty-seven fifty. You're about to get passed. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not doing very well, but I'm gonna talk a lot of shit and then not have the game to back it up because that's more fun. Five thousand seems like a lot. If this was costing me a thousand or a hundred wax every time I played, I'd be pretty upset. It's free, right? Some of you probably confirmed that before if I can spend a lot of wax. Yeah, it's, it's free. So far, so good. Let's go! No! No! Come on. I thought I landed that. All right, let's go. Fuck! Oh, oh, you're still in it. Still selling fake doors. No! I didn't mean to hit it! Shit, I did way worse that time. If you hit no for play again, you can see the leaderboard. All right, I'll do that next time. I did not know it automatically started. That's that's uh, my bad. I'll do, I'm just gonna die. This is a this is a fail of a round. Ranks. Damn, somebody got twenty one thousand. What the fuck? Jesus. How? You know, I am. I'm already top. 
Where am I? Neon Fanatics? Yeah, 3k puts you pretty high up that board. There I am. I'm top top Damn. 40 that's right fucking, now. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm going to try it again. I believe in myself. Let's go. Yeah, let's see if you can beat Random King. No! Fuck! Uh, oh, no. That was a bad, like... When I was trying you, to recover man. from one, it respawned me where it didn't want me to spawn. Alright, that was bad. That was bad. We're we'll playing another round. We're we'll playing another round. I'm trying to my music a little bit, too. Oh, shit. I'm going to die if I turn up the music. It's hard because you can't see... Like, my one note would be, I want to see lower, not higher. Like, I can see so much of the sky, yeah. but I can't see what the fuck is underneath me, which is what I need to see to play. Oh, no, I'm missing everything. Well, it went pretty well. Oh, uh, well. Damn. When it gets this fast, it's so hard. Fuck me. <laughs> I wonder how fast it goes when you're in the 20,000s. I don't know. I feel like that person was cheating, but I have no evidence for that. 20,000 is so much more than everybody else. That's just why it likes seems success. <laughs> that was a pretty devastating round. Yeah, that one was a... This is, uh, this is Waxel World's... Uh, Waxel Rush. Waxel Rush, yeah. No! <laughs> uh, no, it's not going well. I need to get better at timing my spawns. Like, that's what's killing me every time, is I can't land on anything. You have to, like, time it so you spawn and actually hit the first one. That's so far the hardest part of this game is like spawning and not just dying immediately. There we go. Yeah. Oh shit. How is that only a thousand? I don't understand how this like. I gotta land on run. something. Fuck. There you go. Oh my god, I'm flying! <laughs> oh, we go. Oh shit! Oh. Fuck no! I spawned when I didn't want to spawn. No! I was so close for it. How many points is that? That felt like the furthest you've been. I don't know. I just spammed through everything. This game's actually pretty fun, though. No, that was a bad jump. Uh, you still made it. it was generous that giving you your jumps back here. All right, it's being pretty generous. Fuck me! <laughs> I keep spamming through it. So the space bar skips the score screen. All right. I'm going to do like one or two more. I feel like I'll get sucked into this. Just play all freaking day if we... Let's do a giveaway after this. No! Oh, all right. Man, this, this, is a, is... this is a bum round. I'm just going to call this one not fair. I'm going to need two more. Two more. <laughs> oh, you don't need an NFT for it. Okay. That's cool. So you could just jump in and play. It would be cool if it showed my NFT, though. Right, if you were running out of your ninja. Yeah. Fuck. Oh. No! Uh, no, I clicked off the screen. Please don't spawn me the second I click. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I gotta find wait for a big one so I don't drop and die immediately. Shit. I'm so screwed. So uh, 5,000! Did I beat Random King? Go. Let's check, let's check, let's check. <laughs> Alright. Let me, let me die three times. I think I might have eaten Random King. Mission accomplished. Let's see, let's see. Number 17, Neon Fanatics. Let's go! Oh, 
20. Which one are you, Random King? What's your wallet? Let's see if I can find you. Where are you at, Random King? He's saying, dang it. it sounds are like you Rock C4? Good. Is that you? I feel like I should know your wallet. I don't know. I'll take I'll take a top twenty for now. Not bad for like playing for like twenty minutes. You're at twenty. Oh, you're twenty. You're mono suerte is uh, Roxy for. I thought I knew Random King's wallet. How do I not see it here? Oh, this is Et Dawes. Someone I know too. Who's Et Dawes? That baggy hodler. You're looking for a three Z I R four dot I thought you said you had five thousand. I don't see that. Stolen Valor. I don't see it. Am I blind? So this is Mono Suerte at 20. Uga's, Uga's entering the chat too, saying he's going to put you down, take you down on this leaderboard. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't tried yet either, so we'll see where I... Where oh, you're on a previous point. version, so maybe they reset the leaderboard. But I think E.T. Da it might be Wapaka or Baggy Hodler. I think it's Wapaka. E.T. Da, that would make sense, because I think Wapaka is very into this project. So shout out Wapaka. I know NRFB Toy Store. He was big into Uplift back in the day. This guy's been on Wax for a while. He runs like a real-life toy store. And he's into like oh. real-life collectibles. Hell yeah. Yeah, this is fun. This is pretty dope. Once they incorporate the NFTs, so like your images of your ninja, I think it'll be more fun. I also think it'd be cool if on the leaderboard it showed your ninja that you ran with. So yeah, like, that'd, that'd be a way be for good. you to flex your NFT. Maybe I'll DM Ryu my thoughts on this since shouting them out into the universe won't get them done. But I do know the creator of this game. So <laughs> you can just... That's what like one of my favorite things about Nova Rally was like I had all this feedback and it was like I talked directly to the guy making the game. And then he's like, yep, I'll Im include that feedback. But it's like pretty fucking sweet being in the space. Like it's small enough that like you know, if you're not being a shithead and you actually have constructive feedback, like most of the creators here want to make their products better. So like, you know, yeah. they're willing to listen and like, especially the community focused one, like Waxel and like, you know, some of them they'll say, fuck you, not listen to you. But like, I feel like the brands that are doing really well are the community oriented ones that actually listen to what their audience wants. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's do a critter craft grub fish and then call it. Unless what do you guys have anything our... else you wanted to go over? I'm kind of running out of stuff. Uh, I think that's pretty good. I think it's Hit pretty good. Discord yeah. If you want to talk about short selling stuff, though, I can show you how to do that. Yeah, I've just been playing around while we're doing this with arbitrage with Metaphors. They're doing um, like a, a burn event where you know they're doing basically buybacks for their Series One. Oh hell yeah! Release so you for certain NFTs. I think they're doing it in different chunks with different heroes that they give you CMX in exchange um, for burning your your du your duplicates. Or I guess they don't have to be duplicates. But anyway, there's like some interesting arbitrage there. If like you know you common or an uncommon gives you five CMX, CMX token actually holds its value pretty well because they have a good um, ecosystem of LP rewards now with Taco. So yeah. yeah, been doing that. <laughs> I guess. Um, I, nice. I got the real quick, Max. I told everyone. So Max, I tagged you in the. Uh, I tagged you with Matt Morton. Matt D is the guy who's asking about that. I don't know if he's still okay, watching yeah. our. But I tagged you oh, in Discord with his Discord. name and your name. I, I, yeah, Matt's I, been around for a while. Matt's been around since like the uplift days. He's the one that came on our stream and was grilling the fuck out of Jimmy when Jimmy came on our stream and he's like, "What the fuck? Why are you guys selling more land? Like you said, no more servers." And oh, like, that's awesome. Respect. So shout out Matt. Matt, that was like one of our first kind of like drama streams because we we kind of intentionally stayed out of drama when we first got into the space. And it wasn't until we were like, "Yeah, fuck those uplift guys. Like they've screwed over a bunch of people. We're not gonna no longer like be nice to them." And that was like one of the first streams. We was like, yeah, I don't know. Fair point. Matt has some points, Jimmy, if you want to address those. Like, I just let Matt. It's like, I'm not going to tell Matt to stop answering that stuff. But where would I go to yeah. find out, Mark, is what Uga's asking. I've had since RP and now it's not stakes. So just sitting around Series 1 Legendary. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do, which which one is the one that's being bought back right now? Um, Let's see. So there's a fixed amount of blend. So I think once it's out, it's out. So it's not like a completely ongoing thing. But looks like it's the champions so war drop common through legendary block father common through legendary that's actually a good call i have a ton of those i did so many of those friggin blends back when, Nick when this, you um uncommon through legendary so the common blend is closed so those four i guess um and then i was just i mean 
honestly, I haven't kept up with Metaforce a lot. We haven't talked to him in a while, but um, I think, I don't know how long they've been doing this, so which ones are left or have already been done, I'm not sure, but um, it sounds like from reading in their Discord a little bit that they're kind of doing it in chunks. So some of the villains or the, the citizen equivalents, they may be upcoming. I guess you'd have to follow Metaforce for that. I see. But they have a similar token bridge through like the tokenized NFT contract. So you send the CMX NFTs to their FT counterpart through uh, a smart contract like we do with the Neon token. And the and so you can either, you know, and then they have a bunch of uh, taco swap LP rewards. So like CMX taco is incentivized. CMX wax is incentivized. Yep. I think CMF, CMX nefty is incentivized. So if you want to burn and buy back your or get cmx and then just do lp stuff to tie it into the tech talk here you could do that also no big deal but i uh helped eliminate this guy out of our planet get wrecked mix flick <laughs> uh, okay, nerd. yeah the cmx um taco pool is pretty solid given that cmx and taco held their value pretty well um it's it's paying out 179 apr um with cmx being the reward token so um there's some good ones in there depending on what you like cmx fate cmx tlm is incentivized 184 percent so cmx wax nice. is 31 percent paid out in cmx rewards so there's also a pool for cmx on uh wax all right real quick we're going to do a grub fish we're giving away cuttercraft pack Number f mint for number four hundred eighteen. Getting towards ending our stream, and then I'll answer Valard Velvet's question. But I just want to get this started while we rant about our stream. So it's time! It's time! If you want to join exclamation point play, and we're probably not going to stream on Thursday as of now. <coughs> the stream schedule says Thursday is no stream off day, but um, we're doing kind of an early dinner. Um, in Palm Springs here, my family and I, we're eating at like four, so we'll probably be done by like six. So if I'm feeling it, I might try to do an evening stream, but that's also like very optional. I don't know if that's going to happen and there's no scheduled time. So if we do stream on Thursday, it'll just be like an impromptu evening stream if we're feeling like it. But I also don't know like if Max and Paul are going to end up cooking a big meal or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to be busy we'll be cooking if we're or they might go do like a friends giving thing. So I don't know. Houston. Our, our Thanksgiving special is on Friday, everybody. We're doing the uh, the tier list for Thanksgiving food. Apparently pulled up. That's been some um, Black Friday. Yeah, our Black Friday Thanksgiving stuff. But we got the best Thanksgiving foods. Oops, this is the, how the fuck did I just paste the wrong one? Wrong announcement. Fail. But that's our cereal one. This is the sides. So we'll choose the best Thanksgiving sides. You get to vote. This is my list that I made, but I'll just reset all of them before we do the uh, the actual one. This is my personal list. Not a fan of the cranberry. I put that down as C. Yeah, is this even my list? I, got... I feel like I like baked potatoes better than B. I don't know if I agree with this list. I think I was just putting random <laughs> shit around. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like the Metaphor stuff has already been kind of arbitraged a little bit. I, I mainly just did all the stuff I already had in my collection, but if you're sitting on a bunch of duplicates from the Metaphors back in the day, um, you can get some value back there. The arbitrage is a little hit and miss. Potatoes au gratin should be an A. They're fucking bomb. But anyway, we said it earlier. If you think I'm missing anything here, this is kind of a light list. We got mashed potatoes, gravy, we got uh, Brussels sprouts with bacon, pecan pie, green green bean casserole, macaroni and cheese, potatoes au gratin, or scalloped potatoes. This is stuffing. This is baked potato, pumpkin pie, sweet potato casserole, or candied yams, or whatever the hell you want to call that thing. Uh, cranberry sauce, and then biscuits. If there's anything you think we missed that is a staple that you eat, just hit us up on Discord, like tag me. And if you can send a picture and the name of it, I'll add it to the list, and then we can vote on it. Is this, I said it earlier, but this is primarily what like my family would eat. And I know everybody has different Thanksgiving rituals, so I'm sure I'm missing some food that's like yeah, Thanksgiving staples. For, Max is going to put on red cabbage. But yeah, if you want to participate, this will be our Thanksgiving stream. And it will not be on Thanksgiving. It will be the day after. 
And I think if we stream on Thanksgiving, I would guess that like Max and I will probably just play Overwatch or something. Like we might just do a gaming stream that night if we're around. But again, no promises. We might, as of now, Thursday is scheduled off, and Wednesday is scheduled as maybe. <laughs> we might stream on Wednesday. Wednesday is looking more like it though. Like I'm down the stream tomorrow after I do the tram thing. All right, let's go. I'd be yeah, down to play Fall Guys too, Mahalo. We haven't done that in a minute. Fall Guys would be fun. Same. I'd even be down to do like not even like bigger matches, but just like a four player team match. Those are always fun. Dude, that that soccer game or like the volleyball game or whatever in Fall Guys is pretty fun. Yeah. We could do if there's like a, a team only list, that would be super fun to do. Grubfish. Oh, it's a new season for Fall Guys. Let's fucking go. I haven't played the new maps yet. Oh, shit. New maps. I love that. New seasons in Fall Guys are super fun. How is... We didn't ask Valor and Velm. How is Designer Com? Yeah. Was I... Was it fun? Did you do well? Did people show up? Was it just you? Were you the only one there? What happened to Designer Com? <laughs> Dish girlfriend. I like hearing... It's fun hearing Valor and Velm stories like... There's some pretty good like, I consider it the grapevine. Valor and Velm is the grapevine. We get to learn through the grapevine what goes on. Also, did anybody else go to, like, Yamster? Were you there? I can't remember. I feel like you were in L.A. like a week or two ago, right? Like, you were showing us a picture of something in L.A. Designer Con was awesome. There was a whole Web3 section, but they didn't really have any signage showing it. I was able to have... I was able to onboard some folks into Wax, though. Still a lot of collectors who don't have are. That sounds fun. And yes, Yamster is there helping at the booth. Shout out to the Soon Bays. Yamster is an official Soon Bay, I think. Soon Bay. The Soon Bays. <laughs> yeah, Soon Bays is the, yes. the Soon A fans. Oh, Paul, Paul just got back with the food here. I might have to dip out before the end song here to eat. Yeah, this is the end of our stream anyway. I will Paul, say, thanks for joining us I today, miss. Guys. I miss standing, like sitting while streaming. The energy is not here for me. Like I'm so much energetic when I'm standing. I feel like I, I bring the energy. You know, you're, you're pacing, you know, <laughs> keep, it, keep it loose. I did you drink a lot of tea today though. So I'm kind of jacked up on, I'm all jacked up on green tea. Yeah. I'm going to go wander in the snow. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. I make did. a snowman and post a picture. <laughs> Just, you know, for sanity, you sent the prizes already, but I did another prize. So. Yeah, I did yeah. see. That's fine. Yeah, I'll see just you guys. Okay. ship off that last Later, time. Max. Thanks for joining us and doing the tech stuff. Bye, Max. Thanks for sharing your wizardry. Hi to your derpy <laughs> dog. Yeah, Vives thank you, thank been you one of the sponsors. Thank you the wizardry, behind-the-scenes wizardry. What is a fidgetal? Physical digital? Ooh, yeah. I like oh, that. a shirt that came with an NFT. Fidgetal sounds like... sounds dirty to me. It's too close to phallic. <laughs> Is it though? I don't think it's that close. I don't know. Everything just looks like a dick to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we get too off the rails, I should land this plane. <laughs> Max left. Time to get off the rails. This is the episode that gets re-uploaded to YouTube, so I have to make sure to not get as ridiculous. Although, I don't know. Maybe we want our ridiculous stuff being on YouTube. Maybe that is more realistic. I, to I believe brain. that's how you go viral, as the kids say. Viral? Yeah. <laughs> I went viral, guys. Hip to what the kids bop to, you know. Maybe, maybe we have to be on the TikTok. Um, is there anything else we want to go over? Uh, maybe a stream tomorrow. The stream tomorrow will probably be afternoon because I'm doing some sort of tram ride with my family. That'll probably go from like t ten to one or two. So, I'd guess around two or three we might stream tomorrow. But we're sort of just playing it by ear. Uh, I'm sure I'll post in Discord, but. Yeah, this whole week's going to be a little lax. The only scheduled streams for sure that are happening at a time is Friday at 12.30, we're doing the food fight. And then Saturday at 2 p.m., we're doing a Super Blend Saturday for the CritterCraft collab. But the next couple of days are going to be kind of spotty as far as our streaming schedule. Yeah, so. I can do tomorrow afternoon probably. Um, I mean, obviously, there's there might be restaurant stuff that comes up between yeah. now and then. But um, well, that's what we're saying. We're just playing it by ear. I'm letting the audience like know. Eat or something. So um, I should have time in the afternoon. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for bearing with us. We know it's hard to figure out the schedule, especially the people that are chasing the marble. Like, if you're chasing the marble, 
leaderboard and we're streaming at weird times. Sorry, but but you know, shout out to family, shout out to our families. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. This is the first time I've seen my family since my brother's wedding. So it's cool seeing my stepsister and my dad and my stepmom. We're having a good time. Shout out Big Lance, shout out little right. Lance. Hanging out. We're blowing dro. We're blowing dro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the Polish family goes hard on the uh hard on the the devil's lettuce. As yeah, they- we're we're smoking some some cheese. We're we're having some good dinners. I haven't had like a nice family dinner in a long time. Like we're doing, a, we had like a nice steak dinner. I don't know. I'm having a good time. I'm excited to see my family. So I'm not living on Discord as much as I have been the past every other week of the year, but <laughs> a couple weeks a year. I'm not glued to my computer. I'm only on more often than anybody should be, but not as often as I normally am. <laughs> past the lemon sour. As the thing I spoke last night was called blue. Blueberry Skittles. It was pretty wild. <laughs> Back in my day, we had purple haze. <laughs> horchata is the one that wrecked my dad. My dad, like, he's like, I won't smoke horchata again. It, like, wrecked him so hard horchata that night. <laughs> green? Did it have, like, a yeah. cinnamon? It tastes so good. Like, these, like, <laughs> those ones that are dipped in, like, whatever powders those are, they taste phenomenal. It's, like, the sweetest tasting joint I've smoked. I don't know how they got the flavor so good, but I don't know. They're really harsh because they're half joints. So they like start at a half size. So by the time you get to like halfway through the half, it's like the butt of a joint. So those things are like, not only are they very potent, they burn the fuck out of your throat. Like (laughs) once you take a couple hits. But anyway, I'm going to stop ranting about weed because I could talk about that all day. Hit us up in Discord if you want to hang. I'll be around. We got dinner with the fam, but I'm still doing some, some gaming stuff and sort of, I've been more available late night. Like after my parents go to sleep, they go to sleep earlier than me than I've been doing late night NFT stuff. So I'll be available later, later tonight. If everybody's trying to nerd out. Oh, also, I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say hop into our planet. If you guys haven't hopped into our planet, the server is cooking. The first server is about to end. So once the first server ends, all the sweaty people are going to hop over to the second server. So it's, you can maybe get a head start if you pop down. in now. The server is still down. I tried a few minutes ago, but um, but yeah, we're in the northeast corner. So when it does come back up, you can make one. It'd be fun. Yeah, that's funny you say it sound like I'm from New York. What you talking about over here? Is that New York? I can't do accents. What borough are you from? <laughs> that's the New York question. I feel like I have an accent that just doesn't exist. Like, I kind of sound like the... Uh, like I have Pacific Northwest, but then I have a little bit of like the surfer bro. I, I had something in the oven, so I panicked for a second. I thought you were about to bring something that had to do with New York. I was like, "Oh, Mark's gonna go bre- grab a prop, so I'll keep this bit going until <laughs> no. he comes back." But yeah, I, well, I think I think the accent for the Northwest is like we're it's the lack of accent. So you know, we're all from Washington. I I've been told that people from Washington sound like they're on the radio or something. I don't think I speak like everybody from Washington necessarily, though. I think I have a bit of like the California surfer dude. Yeah. And I say like a lot. So I have like that kind of like Valley girl thing going on. And then also I think just the way I speak is in like bursts. I've been told I speak too fast by people. Like when Jackie tried to watch her stream, she's like, you talk too fast. I can't understand what you're saying, which I don't think that's a Pacific Northwest thing. I think that's actually a, a Paul thing. I think cause I hang out with Paul so often, Paul like, talks really fucking fast (laughs) and i did not realize that until somebody else mentioned to me i was like i don't think i used to talk like that i think it's because i live with max and paul we have like i don't know it's like bursts of words you like i don't know how to say yeah he does talk really fast particularly i am a valley girl spanish too his spanish is exceptionally fast that's where i think it comes from i think it comes from like him and his family speak spanish quickly so when they do english they also just kind of like but i don't know that's a that's speculation on my part. I can't guarantee it, but it's kind of fun. Like, you know, the people you're around affect the way you talk and like your vocabulary and the slang you use. And like, it is interesting saying like how you end up talking the way you talk, but fun stuff. Let's buy the dip. I'm not gonna have the microphone on, but I'm going to try to dance. I got to stand, but I can't. <laughs> got to get that oh. energy out. Can you raid for us? I don't think I'm gonna be able to raid while doing this. Uh, I'm not. Well, here, let me log into neon space. I can just do it then. Never mind. Because okay. <laughs> you're going to have to text me the thing and everything. Okay, we're going to do buying the dip. 
and then raid into somebody. Thanks so much for watching. Um, we'll probably be on tomorrow, later in the afternoon. But again, hang out, hit us up in Discord if you have any questions or want to chill. We hope you all had a great weekend. We hope if you celebrate Thanksgiving, you have a good Thanksgiving, and hopefully you get to see your family and slow down for a day or two. And yeah, if you like your family, shout out to them. If you don't like your family, then uh, we will not shout them out. Or we'll shout out them. We'll not shout out to them. We'll shout out them. I hope nobody has to work on Black Friday. I hope you're not fucking a Best Buy employee that's about to be fucking trampled and shot for a PlayStation. Yeah, when Max used to work at Electronics and Fred Meyer, Black Friday was the worst. <laughs> so shout out to any any of my homies, any of our Neon Fam and retail. No I've been there. I used to work at Fred Meyer, and Black Friday was fucking horrible. But yeah, shout out to shout out to your family, and here's buying the dip. Just lost lots of money. Oh, but that's okay. I am with you, with you. Oh man, your boy Kevin just lost lots of money. Oh, but that's okay. I am with you. Here we go. Come on, push it. Find the dip. Find the dip. Here we go. Come on, push it. Find the dip. Find the dip. Here we go. Come on, push it. Find the dip. Find the dip. Here we go. Come on, push it. Oh my God, what's happening? First of all, all this wanting by Wall Street. Of GameStop was short. GameStop was short. Short. You can't allow Wall Street to short 75% of a stock. Crush these companies into the dirt. Thousands of stocks into the dirt. Then when the individual makes money, everyone's up to nerves. I have a kid who bought a house. Paid $50,000 and bought a house. After decades of the shorts, you have to accept the fact that individual investors are playing the same game that you're playing and now you're losing. Here we go. Come on. Push it. Find the dip. Find the dip. Here we go. Peace out, everybody. See you all tomorrow, probably. There's a lot of power in organizations online. Streamlining people can get together in a subreddit. I think it's really funny that.